How you doing? Howdy, indeed. How are you? Doing wonderfully. Uh, nice and uh, pleasantly cold over here in Seattle. How's your day going? Um, pretty good. New York started to be cold as well. We had some insanely warm weather until maybe last week. Nice. Well, uh, hopefully not unpleasantly cold. So what, uh, uh, introduce yourself to the fine people watching. What, uh, what did you want to talk about? Hello, fine people. Um, I was on your stream, I think, two years ago, and uh, we were talking about how I'm a libertarian or left libertarian, uh, meaning that I question many of the things that, you know, people normally accept uh, with the concentrations of power, uh, governments, corporations, and so on. Um, and nothing gets me more libertarian than war. Uh, obviously, uh, conscripting men to fight each other, you know, dropping bombs on civilians, all these things are things that could be avoided if the politicians actually did their job correctly. But unfortunately, those people never get their incentives are not aligned. They don't go to the war. Their families don't go to the war, but they send all these young men and people and babies blow up and it's just awful. So I just wanted to kind of get um, talk about it uh, from a libertarian perspective and kind of see what alternatives we could have had, what we can have and, and so on. For what it's worth, we can't do anything about it, but it would be nice to have a different perspective, perhaps. Yeah, well, I fully agree that war is bad. So what what has that belief led you to vis-a-vis -vis, um, Ukraine? With Ukraine, it's a unique situation. Um, and, and it's not just me saying it. There's many correspondents to say it. I've spoken to Noam Chomsky and others. I think that there's a lot of rhetoric um, that justifies continuing the war. Um, I've seen uh, similar things with Afghanistan. I mean, not personally, but going through history, you can see Afghanistan was very successfully used uh, to create a quagmire for, at the time, the Soviets, the USSR, at the cost of a million Afghan civilians. And so the war went on for years, and then eventually the Soviet Union uh, withdrew, um, and it was considered a success. I think Hillary Clinton said it was worth it, you know, even though the people we supported over there later turned out to use that money to attack us and 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 not just us i mean other people matter around the world not just us but the thing is that all of that could have been avoided too and i think countries need to work together uh in order to prevent these things from happening rather than prolong them exacerbate them you know just because of principles or whatever Sure, well, there's not much to be done to prevent this, right? Obviously, if we could go back in time and prevent Putin from invading Ukraine, that would be preferable, but given the situation we've been handed, it seems like the best possible outcome we can hope for is Ukraine maintaining its territorial sovereignty and supplying it the arms that allow it to do so. Well, I agree, that would be the best outcome. The thing is that there's no plan B. Um, and look, I mean, the U.S. has changed its rhetoric. I think it was after the election or whatever. They're now pushing Ukraine to or they're gently nudging ukraine to the negotiating table finally you know how much of it is tied up with u.s politics or elect uh, i don't know political uh, agendas but i what i'm basically saying is a it could have been avoid it could have been avoided the 2014 um revolution could have been avoided the u.s played a direct role in almost like encouraging or fomenting the revolution in the first place in a democratic country, you know, in, in fact, if Ukraine was democratic, there was no need for a revolution, just like in but, the United States having January 6th, there's no need. If you have democracy, why would you have a revolution? But what you, what that's you going saw way back. in Euromaidan was their democracy. The people of Ukraine weren't happy with Yanukovych's rule. Um, there was authentically like a great deal of unrest and unpopularity. Yanukovych was a puppet of Putin. And after his departure, which left behind, you know, sort of the empty apparatus of his uh, Russian control, you know, we saw um, a more authentic return to Ukrainian democracy. And, a, 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 you know, a process during which Russia has continued to manufacture aggression with Ukraine. I don't think Ukraine could have done anything to prevent this from happening. Certainly not the United States. Oh, I don't place the blame on Ukraine or certainly not Ukrainian civilians. By the way, to me, people are separate from a country. You know, if Catalonia decides to secede from uh, Spain, that's, you know, that's 
Spain may arrest the leaders, and they did, you know, or if the Kurdish referendum to secede from Iraq, and they, those guys were also never able to do that. So countries and people, to me, are different things as a libertarian. But I will say, of course, Ukraine is not to blame here. What I'm basically saying is every country has people with different views, strongly held views, especially in the wake of an empire falling, like the Ottoman Empire or the USSR, whatever. And so what happens is if you take advantage of those differences, like Shiites versus Sunnis, okay, like in Yemen, with Iraq, uh, you create a proxy war. What you do is Iran comes in and gives hope to the Houthi rebels and says, okay, Houthi rebels, uh, it's your country. You can take this over. The Shiites, you know, can, can rise again. And then the, the Saudi coalition says, there's a revolution we didn't like. Now we're losing power. So they, with you, there we support the aggressor. Uh, in a way. And, and of course, the concept of who is an aggressor is very interesting because there's a proxy war with essentially, of course, Ukraine is just caught in the middle of this. But I don't to say the Ukraine, U.S. did nothing, I mean, the U.S. did more than Iran did in Yemen. I don't think Ukraine is in the middle. It's one of the two combatants in a war between two nations. No, no. What I'm saying is that territory, uh, which is Ukraine since 1991, was between empires for hundreds of years. It was part of Poland, it was part of Russia, it was part of the Habsburg uh, Empire, uh, you know, Austro-Hungarian and so on. So there's always some sort of meddling in the politics, but more importantly is domination. So yes, of course Russia is, uh, it's an imperialist country, but so is the US. And I'm saying if but these countries- of course, we're not invading. Well, we did invade many other countries. We've invaded way more countries than Russia did. Yeah, but, but we're not talking yeah. about those countries. If we were, we then I would have a different stance. In this instance, we're not the aggressors. And it's not a proxy war. In this instance, yeah. The people of Ukraine authentically want to defend themselves against Russia. In a proxy war, another nation is just being used as a puppet in another country's machinations. Regardless of what America wants here, Ukraine wants to defend itself. Our involvement is purely to Ukraine's benefit, but we do not manufacture their consent. Ukraine wants to defend itself. I just want to be clear. When you say Ukraine wants, or Ukraine wants to defend itself, people do not necessarily want to be conscripted. Regular people- The people in of both Ukraine want to defend themselves. No, here's what I'm trying to say. That, that yes, today, when you get it to the point where they have to defend themselves against an invasion, and even then, there are many people who may say, look, we, we got to stop this. And these people, I've seen screenshots so I've personally talked to the peace negotiators of with, Ukraine. With respect, no. Yeah. By every metric we can see, the people of Ukraine have an incredibly high morale for self-defense. The will of the Ukrainian people, insofar as such a thing can be extrapolated, is to defend themselves. Much as it was for France when they were invaded, Poland when they were invaded, and so on, it's a fairly unambiguous situation from their perspective. Obviously, not every single citizen in Ukraine wants to fight, of course, but that's the nature of war. Um, but that's you know. an understatement that not every citizen. My point is simply this. You can push things to the point where people choose to fight where previously they didn't. Okay. There's a guy who grows up in Gaza, doesn't want to fight. Regular people don't want to fight. Then his brother gets bombed or killed or whatever. Or he needs to defend, you know, his territory. And I say this as, you know, a Jewish person and someone who supports Israel. I understand if people get radicalized and angered by events and are pushed to the brink. I'm saying that didn't need to happen. Yes, today, many people would like to fight and many people are angry about Bucha. Many people are angry about war crimes, but there was a peace negotiation going on. And what I'm saying is that thing completely died around April. And that's a huge that tragedy. That is because Russia will not leave. They need to leave. Just because, okay. So what? Th this is the other thing I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say there has to be a plan B. If, if I've seen this with Afghanistan, I've seen this same rhetoric with other countries, you know, if this absolute victory doesn't happen, there's no plan B. We're going to keep going and it's not us fighting. It's like Schiff said, they fight Russia over there so we don't have to fight them over here. In that's, other words, we're, that's not know. true. The plan B is if they're unable to reacquire their territory, then they'll sue for peace while allowing Russia to maintain the territory that it acquired. But obviously, as long as Ukraine feels they can keep taking more territory back, they will. Why wouldn't they? They were invaded. Like I said, I would be very glad if Ukraine could take back all its territory, drive the Russians out, and then there would be peace, right? What I'm trying to say to you is, 
first of all, 100,000 men died on each side. And I say men because that's mostly who gets conscripted. They cannot leave. These countries don't let them leave. So the difference between our perspectives is that you talk in terms of like Ukraine wants, Russia wants. These are not people. Countries are things that, you know, exist for 100 years, 50 years, whatever. The people, the human beings, their lives should matter more than which flag is you know, over Crimea, then you shouldn't have to kill 100,000 people over that. Perhaps Russia shouldn't have invaded the people who led to those deaths. Yeah, but I have a problem with the blame game. So if a million Afghans die and then we say, well, perhaps the USSR should not have come and helped the, uh, the revolutionary government in Afghanistan. Yeah, perhaps that is true. But we're not children. We know what it takes to achieve peace and our politicians can do it. In this case, Many people, from the Pope to Tulsi Gabbard to uh, Tucker Tulsi, Carlson to Noam Chomsky, Tulsi, Tulsi said, Gabbard and Tucker Carlson, people whose opinions I often defer to in matters of geopolitics. Well, I also would like to say the Pope is a lefty. Noam Chomsky is a lefty. The Pope I'm is a lefty. the Pope, and Noam Chomsky is wrong on this. Um, no, what, what do you think he's saying? Noam Chomsky. Oh, I've do I've talked with Noam Chomsky, or I've sorry, I've talked about Noam Chomsky in videos where I talk about Noam Chomsky. I'm talking mm -hmm. with you right now, and the problem is, right now, like, you should be playing the blame game, because one side is to blame. This isn't World no. War I, this isn't some complex network of treaties that ended up unraveling in a, you know, unfortunate and mutually blameable conflict. Russia just invaded Ukraine in a process of ethnic replacement and extermination, as so admitted not only by their leaders, but by their state media officials. Uh, the people of Ukraine overwhelmingly support Zelensky, who has been quite hawkish in his defense against Russia. Insofar as a democratic society can be said to agree on something, you'll never get everyone to, but you can get most people to. Something like 90% of Ukrainians, more Ukrainians than you would ever get to agree on any other subject, are in favor of the continued defense against Russia. And I don't see any reason why we should not support this, considering the fact that they are the aggrieved party in this instance. It's not that we shouldn't support this, is that we should have the entire time allowed, for example, France and Germany uh, create a peace agreement which existed, an internationally negotiated peace agreement from 2014. They met multiple times. Uh, Poroshenko met with Putin. You mean Putin. the one Russia the, kept breaking? Both sides kept, let's put it this way, did not implement a very simple agreement. This agreement was stop fighting. No. Get an, uh, a, no, a demilitarized zone. The agreement right? involved the withdrawal of Russian troops from the uh, Donbass region, which they never did. Um, the whole treaty was a non-starter. Yeah, I agree, without but I, I am not. I am not uh, saying Russia is somehow an angel or blameless. No, no, no what it's I'm not. Trying... It's not that they're not an angel. It's that the Minsk Accords could never have worked because Russia never cared about them. They were an. Uh, they were a a a bait to waste time. They were a uh, oh. You know, we may be the aggressors I, here, but how about you listen to us? We have a treaty, we have a solution, but they never listened or cared. Well, I strongly disagree. I think it if doesn't there matter is if you framework. disagree, this is factually mm -hmm. correct. They never abided by even the initial protocols of the agreement. Well, the initial protocols required both sides to withdraw troops. And it was like children. It's like, no, you go first. No, you go no, first. No, Ukraine Here's didn't the... have troops in the Donbass. The Minsk Accords had the Donbass region as the neutral territory, which was, by the way, Ukrainian land that Russia invaded. Oh, Russia yes, it is Ukraine, and there. it would have, until the invasion in 2022, it would have remained completely under sovereign Ukrainian control. And all the borders, part of the Minsk agreement is that Ukraine would go back to controlling all of its borders, and it would be Ukrainian land. In Russia fact, never withdrew the only... troops. Hmm? Russia never withdrew their troops from that region. They never even began to abide yes. by the Minsk Accords. No, it's not that they didn't, Everyone began, if you look at Wikipedia and you look at what happened since 2015, you don't have to ask me, go on Wikipedia and look at the history of the Minsk Accords. What I'm telling you is not only the Minsk Accords, but they were, Minsk is in Belarus, but Belarus wasn't the only country trying to broker the peace, okay? What happened was also, by the way, Belarus supported the new government in Ukraine after the Euromaidan, okay? With Lukashenko going, they did not agree with Putin and Russia. What I'm saying is that Belarus wanted peace, but so did France and Germany. Merkel, and at that time Macron, Macron and I think before Macron, um, they were always getting 
Putin together with the Ukrainian president, Poroshenko, for example. It was called the Normandy format, and you can Google it. Normandy format happened many times, not just in Minsk. It happened in Paris. It also happened in Normandy. That's what it's named after. But this is a non-starter. Yeah. Twice. This is politicians the, trying to make an agreement. Russia never tried to work. make an agreement. They were just wasting time, which they succeeded mm. in doing. This is where I disagree, because what I'm trying to tell you is, and this is what Noam Chomsky is also saying, since 24... Well, let me say what he's saying. We as the United States can do something about what our country does. Okay, Our country, since 2013, John McCain went over there to Ukraine had these massive crowds. He was telling them, why do you need Russia? Go be with Europe. Be with us. We're, we want you, right? And it's a very interesting thing for a country that supposedly doesn't like meddling in elections or whatever. So they've meddled in Russia's election with Boris Yeltsin. Wait, wait, how is it no. election meddling for an allied nation to say, hey, you should be allies with us? Is that How is it election meddling for a nation? Is that not nation? allowed? Like, we can't say, it hey, we are your allies? We... Okay, so when we tell a country, when we go into a sovereign country, and we tell one of the groups, let's say we go into Yemen, and we tell the group of Houthi rebels, hey, go be with the, with the Shiite world. Uh, don't worry. Stop with the Sunnis. We're better for Ukraine you. Ukraine wasn't experiencing a revolution. It was a democratic country and an ally of ours after Euromaidan, clearly. And then we spoke to the democratic government of Ukraine. It, it wasn't like no, there was we an spoke active, to the protesters. Like, the protesters. We, we literally, it's like if elected. someone came to January 6th and told the January 6th protesters, you know, we're with you. Go ahead. We don't. You should go with the Republicans. You like know, literally, if the January... socialist, you are ob you are very antagonistic mm -hmm. to the idea of like the people rising up to depose an unpopular leader. After, yes, I am. After yeah. Yanukovych was removed, democratic elections resumed, and the people chose unambiguously pro-EU candidates. Um, well, let me ask you the then. The people so, of Ukraine uh, have made their choice, and we speak to those people. That's why they stand with us now. No, see, this whole thing about the people making their choice, you're put, when people are pushed into having to make a choice, you could also say that the anti-Maidan protesters made their with, choice. With respect, with respect, yeah. I don't even sure. want to respect this divulgence. By every metric we can determine the will of the Ukrainian people, they believe more in what I say they believe than they do in you by by an exponential degree. We're talking 10 to 1. There are more Ukrainians who agree with what I say they agree on than there are Americans who like pie. This is not something I'm interested in discussing. It was a democratic country which has but had... You an, support violence. You I do su support... I support <laughs> defensive violence, absolutely. Of course I do. No, no, not defensive. You just said you support when people rise up against a kleptocrat or whatever. You call you yourself support a instead of, can I Can I recommend a, an, an alternative in a democratic country? Ukraine was a democratic country. In a democratic country, like this country, you wait until the next election, and then you vote the so other wait, guy you out. You shouldn't be allowed to protest. You shouldn't be allowed to topple your government. No, he fled. Yeah, because they, the, not just he, the Parliament building was literally it was January six times ten. They went into the Parliament building. They burned things. They came in with guns. They took over you the mean thing. Yes, he you fled mean after Yanukovych's government started no, shooting before. peaceful no. protesters. No, violence against the protesters took place well before that point. And under Putin's recommendation, Yanukovych started having the protesters shot. They started killing peaceful protesters. And what were they protesting? They were protesting Yanukovych acting against the will of the Ukrainian people by siding with Russia over EU um, participation that was more favorable with the voters. If you oppose this, then perhaps you are an autocrat. This is fine. It's your problem. But as it's a socialist the, no. and a libertarian, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I am for stability. You're socialist libertarian i'm for stability don't protest your government come on yeah because i am you know what it what, what a revolutionary socialist is and versus like a socialist who wants to bring about socialism gradually through the pro through the democratic system do you understand the difference i understand that you're neither group so it doesn't really matter what yeah i'm a libertarian which means i prefer smaller organizations co-ops credit unions and apparently obeying that the people state. voluntarily join communes yeah, families, sure. But I don't uh, subscribe to your notion that, well, if 51% of people voted or 20% of people uh, turned out and 11 people, 11% 11 voted, that's the majority, it, we now can conscript 
all the men and go make them fight. 100,000 people died on both sides. For yeah, what? Maybe Russia shouldn't For have what? invaded. That's crazy. That's the blame game. Maybe, no, maybe. no, you Look, can't. I, Wait, hold. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. This is ridiculous, yeah. okay? It's not the blame game. They invaded. I don't know what kind of juvenile... It's literally... No, 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 no. Wait, stop, 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 okay? It's not sure. the blame game. It's causality. It's, ah, well, hmm. In our universe, when you do things, do things happen? Yes? Ah, okay. Well, Russia invaded. So, like... That's not the blame game. Like, yes, they're responsible. By your logic, like, what how, should should all nations invaded like just accede, just surrender to the invading nation? Should Poland and is France? It, do you want me to answer that? Yeah. I'm almost so afraid what you're of saying what you'll is, say. But... I, I, well, <laughs> first of all, what you're saying is literally he started it. Yeah. Like, yes. literally, it's no. I you are fully correct. I am literally saying yes. Russia invaded Ukraine. Not he the started. same as Ukraine invading Russia. I, yes, I those are two different but things. Adults realize that there are <laughs> slightly more complex. Hmm. Hold on, let me just say one thing. There's slightly more complex conflict resolution strategies in the world oh. than blaming. Oh, he started it. Therefore, oh. oh, we could just kill a lot of people now. No, I the see. thing well, is, Germany that, invaded France, but really, what's the difference between that and France invading Germany? When you, when you think about it that way, all these. Okay, so let's take that example. Let's take the mo let's go. This is can, quickly can I get into one debate on example. the Ukraine war that doesn't end up in some kind of like metaphysical? No, let's do Godwin's law. Let's go no, directly. No, no, this Hitler wait, wait, stop, please. No. This is my issue. I keep wanting to have a discussion on like the particulars of the Ukraine situation. I want to have what you want to have. Ev discussion. Every time I get into a convo with somebody who like rejects empiricism as a concept, like you have no. to be so crazy to take a different position than what I have on this issue that it's like, okay, well, let's talk. Are there any differences between not doing things and doing things? Well, maybe there isn't actually. And it's like, well, what, the, what, what are we talking about? Like, sure, fine, of France and Germany. There is a difference, but that's not the only relevant difference. Right? There are other things involved, like preventing a war, like getting to a table and have. They could have had a Zoom discussion, Putin and Biden, Putin and Zelensky. If only this they had, could have been had a Zoom discussion, Putin would have not invaded. Well, actually, yes, because oh. I. Oh, so we're gonna speak in like two second sound bites. I'm gonna listen it's to what you're saying. It's just very silly. Me... No, it's not. What silly is saying? He started it, therefore I win. That no. is, well, yeah, yeah. I do think that when you're the country that invades the other country for no reason, that is like kind but of a mark against. It's not true. Your premise it. is wrong. It wasn't for no reason. Mm. Look, a lot of for? people would be way more sympathetic if the Ukrainians weren't using cluster bombs and, and, and killing people in the Donbass since 2014. Ah, yes, you mean when Russia invaded in 2014 and Ukraine defended its territory? Am I, are you just going to keep saying Russia invaded as like the yes, answer to I, anything I Yes, I say? actually am. I will okay. keep rebuking so let's your go, points by let's reminding go to the you time that, yes, before. Russia okay. did do the thing we're talking so about. So let's go chronologically to the time when Russia, before no, Russia invaded. No, stop. We do this Donbass cycle every time I talk with somebody. I thought we were talking mm -hmm. about the war, but it's always like we have to do the anti-empiricism bit going all no, the way the back to the No, you're the one who's going back in time and assigning blame who did it first. So wait, so I'm no, I'm not. You're the one who brought up Euromaidan. I didn't go back in time. I want to talk about the war. Yeah, but the war is a continuation of the previous proxy war. No, of the, just the war that Russia d did. The current invasion is a reaction to Ukraine using Bayraktar drones in 2021 and started winning and the Bayraktar drones are coming from a NATO nation which so is the Turkey. current so the current invasion by Russia is because Russia got mad that their previous invasion wasn't working out wait so are you talking about the previous invasion or not talking you keep about the bringing it up dude everything is a reaction to a previous thing well, okay no one is every doing previous thing, no thing seems to be Russia invading that's like it, funny however far back you go it's like oh what did this oh Russia did okay this. But that's let, let me let me try a different approach here okay let's talk about right now okay so there's a public that supports a war like in the Iraq war if you look defending, at statistics, defending themselves okay. sure no I'm talking about the Russian public supporting the invasion right I'm talking about the aggressor country let's say US invading Iraq or Russia invading Ukraine, the Russian public, the majority, poll, according to polls, independent polls, supports the war still. Are you willing okay? to concede that Russia is the aggressor country? I'm, I'm surprised you're willing to give me that. But yeah, I'll take it. It's uh, not, but I have never, I'm trying to tell you, yes, Russia invaded Ukraine. Ukraine didn't invade Russia. I mean, that's obvious. Oh, yeah, but I was starting to be gaslit by this conversation into believing there wasn't a meaningful difference. But no, okay, I'll, I'll take that. Yes, I do think that Russia started it, yes.
what I'm saying is Russia invaded Ukraine. I'm using precise language here. Yes, Russia invaded Ukraine with its troops. Ukraine did not invade Russia. This is obvious. But what I'm saying to you is a proxy war, if you look on Wikipedia, is not just about a, using a country or whatever. It's about this. A country has multiple viewpoints. People in the west of Ukraine remember bad things that Stalin did and don't like Russia, and that's fine. And I can understand them, and I can understand why they have statues to someone like Stepan Bandera. On the other hand, people in the east of Ukraine, actually some of them longed for the Soviet Union, and there's also a divide between the old and the young. People who grew up after 1991 are more nationalistic. What I'm trying to tell you is that it doesn't have to be like this, because Normally, normally, if there is a federal union like the EU or like the USSR, like USA, if within that union, if something happens, if this exact thing happened, Crimea went from being a Russian territory to being a Ukrainian territory, 1954, no one killed anyone over it. It was an administrative change. Nobody cared. Wait, wait, because, wait hold on. Yeah. Wait, really quickly. So that was sure. an annex from Russia that they used military force to accomplish. And the only reason Ukraine didn't fight it is because at the time they had basically no domestic military. No, one no, of, I, I one think of the you're, reasons uh, groups like the yeah. Azov Battalion rose to prominence was because they were part of the hyper-nationalist militia groups that eventually got folded into the um, National Defense Corps. Because at the time, Ukraine had like nothing with which to defend themselves against Russia. By the way, I want to say this, uh, you, you totally misunderstood me. I'm saying, maybe you don't know this, but uh, Crimea used to belong to Russia until 1954. Russia meaning the Russian SSR, the Soviet Socialist Republic of Russia, okay? And then it got moved over by the feds. It got assigned to the Ukrainian Socialist so uh, Republic. No one in either republic really cared to kill people over this back then. And the difference was because they lived in a federal union where they realized that there are more important things to do than which flag will fly over Crimea. Today, because in 1991, this union fell apart, it's like now people have, people who grew up after 1991 have a nationalist feeling. They want their own country. They're proud of it. And now the same exact event is why I'm a libertarian. I'm okay. questioning. Do you why do you, see, do you have to kill people over these things? Do you see things? how there might be a difference between a territory yeah. in the USSR having its allegiances reshuffled slightly, uh, slightly within its own like um, broader yes. coalition and Russia using military force to just outwardly annex Crimea? Like Those are two very different things. Do you understand that everyone has military force in a region? Ukraine has military force in Crimea okay. when Crimea and is Ukraine part of Ukraine. hasn't used it to annex any Russian territory. It doesn't need to because, wow, look, when Catalonia wants to secede from Spain, which it did, and then Spain used its military force or its police force to crack down on that, okay, that is still a force. Countries use force to keep people. When Bangladesh okay. used, so, uh, when Bang hold on one second, when Pakistan used genocidal rape in the Bangladesh War of Independence, we supported Pakistan, the United States did. For, I'm not talking about US hypocrisy at the moment. I am not doing what about is what I'm trying to tell you is every country uses force to keep territory. This is a war of territory, plain and simple. And yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I think it's bad when countries use military force to annex other populations. Yes, it's bad when we do it. It's bad when Russia does it. Yes, sure. So I agree. So so that's that, not so that's not good. So we agree on that. Let's see where we can find agreement, okay? Can I ask you something, which I think I know about you, right? Sure. When we first spoke two years ago, you were constantly talking about fascists, like sort of like with the German anti-fascistische action, right? They, they saw social democrats as fascists, like anyone who's not with us is against this, right? Do you still feel that way or have you changed a little bit? Have you mellowed out? Um, is everyone a fascist except for... Socialist. Me specifically, yes. Um, no, I, I think that, um, I don't think I've ever really thought that literally everyone who isn't a fascist is a, or who isn't a socialist a fascist. I've never believed in that, like, Stalinist social fascism bullshit. I think that liberals have a predisposition to support normalcy, uh, the status quo, and that fascists are often quite good at portraying what they believe in as that. And for that reason, liberals aren't always the most reliable allies in anti-fascist action. But I don't think that means that every liberal is a fascist. It's just sort of a broader tendency.
Fair enough. But back in 2020, when Antifa was very active, you were saying things like, I think 50% of all the United States citizens are fascist. Maybe basically. 30%. Okay. So here's my question to you. How can someone who wants to fight fascists, right? In Ukraine, you like turn a blind eye to nationalism, right wing, and suddenly, oh, there's almost no fascists there. Like, what? what is your standard for deciding if someone's a fascist or not? There are plenty of fascists in Ukraine. Okay. So you don't consider uh, violence to be a useful way to fight fascists, correct? Um, well, it really depends on the scale you're talking about. It worked with Hitler. I don't mean punch a Nazi or, you know, who is that guy? Uh, the new Nazis, uh, punch a Nazi day. I just mean literally like what anti-fascistische action used to go around and pick fights uh, with the brown shirts and the brown shirts picked fights with them. How was that useful? Um, this is a very broad question. It depends historically. Sometimes street violence between anti-fascist and fascist groups can be beneficial. Sometimes it can't be. It usually feels like that stuff is really marginal and the real wins are like the capture of courts and other like electoral systems that allow the mm -hmm. implementation of state violence. I would prefer to, the way that you have less violence is you have frameworks uh, that people have to follow. Legal frameworks, religious frameworks, families, whatever. And the more of those you have, business, whatever, is how you tamp down on these flare-ups, okay? When you have these groups that have complete differences, like Shiites and Sunnis, whatever, I don't know, but they really care about their differences, or the people in the west of Ukraine and east of Ukraine, you, the last thing you want to do if you care about the people of Ukraine is to go to one of those groups and say, screw the other group and, and, and start to um, increase the violence, right? Increase the animosity because the, that's really bad, right? Well, Would you agree that that's bad to exacerbate division? Well, we're not really talking about exacerbating division. We're talking about them being invaded by a neighboring nation with a full military complement of hundreds of thousands. But why of aren't we talking about what led to that? Well, I'm not talking about what led to that. I'm just talking like Why? that. Because we're, we're talking about the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the subject of the discussion, which is not interpersonal street violence. Right, but it's not violence. just it's the world invasion. didn't start yesterday, right? I mean, uh, no, the war, imperialist... Russia did not invade Ukraine because Ukrainians were mean to Russians. Um, they were mean to the Donbass residents. No, However, the Donbass Russia... residents were invaded by Russia. Russia paid secessionist okay. groups in so we have... Ukraine gave them military equipment, and then and later gave that, them troops. What happened before Russia invaded the Donbass residents? Uh, a Putin puppet was ousted by a democratic popular protest that led the cowardly leader to flee and shit himself. Okay, that's one way to describe essentially a revolution toppling a government, yes. It was not. Uh, the, wait, hold, wait, stop. The government didn't topple. The parliament, all of the orders of government were kept uh, preserved. Yanukovych fled of his own will. He was not attacked. He chose to flee because he was a puppet and a coward. Offered, hold on. Everyone admits this, even the people in the right sector, even the people, Klitschko admits this. Yanukovych offered a deal, pretty much uh, agreeing to every demand of the people. They just said, it's too little, too late, you gotta go. Okay. Uh, no, no, he d didn't. He, f no, mm -hmm. he, wait, really? no, he didn't. Not only was he doubling down on everything and killing protesters, he started nope. passing incredibly authoritarian surveillance laws, uh, giving people permission to like outwardly arrest any protesters on the street. Um, there were like there was a series. Of, I am like, not for you. I am not for authoritarian laws. I'm not for you. Well, he was. He was super for. Them. Well, he's for himself. Yeah. There was course, like but... it was like tw the black book of twelve laws or so. There was like a twelve laws he tried to pass. Some of which were so extreme his party wouldn't even back him on like half of them. And they were like insanely authoritarian. Like, yeah, we're basically just ending democracy thanks to these protesters, that kind of thing. I'd say it was good that he was ousted. So if Zelensky bans opposition parties, opposition media, starts locking people up, you support that though because you want the outcome of Ukraine defeating Russia. He hasn't right? banned opposition parties. He's banned the parties that are explicitly pro the government that is currently invading them. And good riddance. There are, other parties, there are other parties that are not Zelensky's party that operate in Ukraine with no threat of legal reprisal. I'm okay Let with me banning the parties okay, that so are pro the enemy. When I'm just trying to understand literally like what your basis is, right? What you're coming from. You think Ukraine is a democracy since 2014. It's been a democracy believe, since before then, but it became a since better before. one since. Well, I mean, as a democracy, you don't need a revolution. Just vote the guy out. No. Uh, democracies do not mean that you might never have to hold a protest that causes a leader to flee. 
but not every few years, right? You have the Orange Revolution, same guy, Yunukovych, right? There they disputed his victory, which I can understand. Because he cheated. But here, yeah. it's something else. Here it causes a constitutional crisis for no freaking reason. It didn't cause a constitutional crisis. The constitutional provisions were kept in order. Um, there was some difficulty when it came to, like, finding a replacement leader. So during the meantime, the opposition leader held for about six months, after which elections were held and everything resumed as normal. Please understand, by the way, I am for stability, so I'm happy when the new leader got elected. I'm happy when Poroshenko got elected. I was happy with Yatsenyuk. He's a cool guy. Okay. What I'm saying to you is what I'm not happy with is other countries coming to meddle and train insurgencies. And like you said, these I mean, fighters that you... And so did the United States and NATO countries did no, they on the other side. Oh, really? They didn't send weapons and training to all of these right-wing paramilitary groups? No. Literally. They no. Just, no, that has not been... So it's literally like, okay... Here is an article I have. Can I share my screen? I don't know if this is possible here. You just, you just link, it, link it to me. Okay, sure. Um, how do? Oh, I see. Yeah, I could do that. Um, I'm familiar. I might be familiar with the article that you're about to link. To my knowledge, no concrete evidence has ever been found of like a protracted state effort to embolden far right um, protest groups. There's no need for. Well, us according to, to human like rights, like Human Rights Watch and others, there. Uh, a lot of arms were finding their way to the insurgent groups. Listen, and it's not new. Syria, we did wait, the same thing. Wait, that's wait. Of, wait, of course, American military equipment finds its way to radical groups. That's the case all over the world. The question is whether or not we actively aided them. Yeah, that's what I'm about to send you. Sorry, no it takes me a little bit of time. Here. Um, Rights groups, okay. This one is about Israel arming these groups. I'll send you one about the United States. Here's one. Okay, here you go. Now, back in 2018, it was still normal to write things like neo-Nazis. By the way, I don't think they're neo-Nazis, uh, many of them. I think they are nationalists. This is 2018, though. Yeah. But again, you're ignoring all everything that led up to this, right? Wait, no, I'm wait, asking, this is totally not yeah. the same thing. Human rights activists petitioned the court to cease Israeli arms exports to Ukraine since some of these weapons reach neo-Nazi elements. This is not even remotely the same thing. This is just arms manufacturers selling weapons to Ukraine broadly and some of those trickling downstream to like Azov groups. This is not the same as NATO forces armed and trained neo-Nazis to oust Yanukovych, which was your initial claim. Oh, that, that wasn't my claim. Are, you're jumping around. Are you talking about 2014? Ousting Yanukovych happened in 2014. Yeah, right? that was your own, that was the thing that we did not directly support far right groups in. This also is not direct support of far right. I'm not talking about look. I'm trying to tell you that the United States literally came over there. There was you could see videos of John McCain literally addressing the protesters. Look at those videos. Fine. You look at videos all the time. I, yeah, right? I've seen those. They're fine. Okay, so he's literally telling them to essentially screw Russia and go to Europe. Go to. Uh, He's meddling in their so electoral when, when I think of election meddling, I usually think of covert or subterricious means of tipping the Why? scales. Why be can't overt be, be also? Because if by overt election meddling you mean political leaders just saying, hey, we think you should do this, then everyone is meddling in everyone's democracy. That would mean that Joe Biden is meddling in like um, France's democracy when he says like, I look forward to a partnership with this leader or something, because that means like any statement could be interpreted as meddling at that point. Fair enough. What I'm saying to you is that's what happens all the time. But I'm, Imperialist I'm fine countries with meddle in other people's elections. We meddled in Honduras elections. No, 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 no. But what happened mm. in Honduras is not the same as Americans saying, hey, fuck Russia, by the way. We meddle in Latin America. Like, we, we have people killed. We rig their elections. That's mm -hmm. meddling. I don't think it's meddling for John McCain to be like, hey, this dipshit Yanukovych, he's pretty, mm -hmm. like, dumb and gay. You shouldn't listen to him. Like, that. that's fine. I'm fine with that. So, let's see where you're not fine. That's so just Russia... expressing an opinion. So, so here's an example, right? If you really are on the left uh, economically, so, so since the USSR fell, right, the, the Chicago school, uh, the Chicago boys kind of wrote that manual that they used, you know, in Chile and other places with Pinochet. Mm -hmm. uh, they basically said, okay, we're going to have what's called uh, shock therapy. Okay, we're going to privatize everything. Turns out, gave it to the oligarchs. And then what happened was people tried it for a few years. They, they got inflation, they got terrible job security, and they rebelled against uh, 
uh, Yeltsin, okay, who was implementing this. Now, the United States went in there, and here's Time Magazine, I sent you this, yanks to the rescue the Russian president with the American flag on the cover of Time Magazine. They made a movie called Spinning Boards about this very thing. Would you call that election meddling? It's, it's covert. Would you call that election meddling? Um, j just, just Yeltsin having outwardly positive relationship with the West? I don't know if I would call that election meddling. We did a lot of really bad stuff with the shock doctrine, but I don't know if election meddling would in that instance be like the crime I would charge us with. Like I would charge us with like exploiting um, the, the former Soviet states dead end economies by rushing in with a bunch of money and financiers saying like, hey, here's our strategy for rebuilding you. And it just involved like enriching um, oligarchs, you know? But that's not really election meddling. That's more like economic rape, which is obviously really bad, but yeah. I... Uh, well, okay. So I think we have some agreement here, but let me give you a bit of context you, you might not know. In 1993, there was almost the beginnings of a civil war and a Euromaidan in Russia. So against, uh, there was this constitutional crisis where Yeltsin wanted to dissolve the parliament and the parliament had a no vote, con no confidence vote of Yeltsin. Yeltsin fired on the parliament and essentially had a very, very abysmal um, uh, approval ratings going into, he had 6% approval. Okay, even compared to Biden, that's really low, going into the election. And then he won. Okay, so it's not just like, oh, we did a few things. Like, he, we wanted to make sure the communists didn't come back. Are you right? suggesting that we directly rigged those votes? If that's so, I haven't seen, no. I haven't looked into that. But if we did, then that would obviously be meddling. Sure, that, I mean, so your standard is just us actually rigging the other country's votes. It's not helping a candidate win in, by any other means. No, I don't think it's meddling when it's just, a po it's just a political figure openly stating what they believe. Because if that's the case, everyone's meddling everywhere all the time. Like, if McCain, is sa if McCain says, like, hey, um, Euromaidan protesters, we support you and fuck Russia. Like, that's definitely involvement. But when I he think of He goes over there. He yeah. goes over there to large crowds, which later went up to take arms against their government. Well, they were protesters freely exercising their legal rights in the democratic state no of problem. Ukraine. So you have no problem with Iran fomenting a revolution in Yemen with the Houthi rebels, right? No problem. I don't know enough about the details of this to meaningfully compare them, but is what happened in Yemen a bunch of peaceful protesters legally enacting their right to protest a government in and initially, then being killed by the government? Initially, a lot of the Arab Spring is exactly like that. Yes. Um, well, then I would have to look at it in a case by case basis. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell you is I care about outcomes. We thinking people intelligence is about looking for patterns. We know how proxy wars start, what they lead to, how many deaths there are, how much suffering there is. We know what's coming and it's almost it's evil to ignore that. And what you're saying is, well, as long as we could blame Putin, no anything so right. th so this is this is where we we trend from like dumb to dishonest right mm. i've not said what you were saying i'm saying russia invaded the excuses mm. they gave for their invasion were incoherent and at times blatantly fascist it was not like saving the good people of the donbass they've essentially admitted this you putin talked about restoring the borders of the russian empire in his opening excuse there were a medley of false flag attacks and just jump starts to attempt to justify the war from the beginning. Russia's not acting in good faith, as evidenced by the fact that they basically never have since Putin but came no into one government. Is. No, 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 not with the equivocacy. Ukraine had territorial sovereignty. They were invaded in 2014, had territory annexed in 2014. Uh, Russia pushed them to um, agree to um, uh, agreements, to, to um, uh, uh, ceasefires in the Minsk Accords which Russia then did not follow themselves. They never even pretended to. Russia lied constantly about the degree of involvement they had with these separatists that they funded in Donbass, lied about having soldiers there, lied about bringing equipment there. All of this has been, from day one, clear imperialism. Now, given I the agree. fact that Russia has been the antagonist this entire time, I am mm -hmm. fair, I think it's fair for me to say it's kind of on them what's happening. And Ukraine has only two real things that it can do. It can fight or it can give up. If it fights, which is what's happening right now, many people die, but there's a chance that the good guys win. And I do mean good guys in this instance. Mm -hmm. And But I'm not saying, if they surrender, I agree with everything. If they surrender, mm -hmm. then we essentially normalize the idea that any bigger country can just annex whatever territory they want. 
Russia can just gobble up whatever they want. The United States can gobble up whatever they want. Oh, no consequences, you know, because if they fight back, it's on them for prolonging the violence. It would be like okay. blaming the people of Iraq for fighting back after we invaded. Okay, so there's so much here, and I'm going to try to keep a track of everything going backwards, okay? So just allow me to answer. First of all, I blame the United States for invading Iraq, okay? I shouldn't have acted rashly. There was a diplomatic solution. Hans don't play Blake the blame game. Hold on, let me finish though. Uh, I blame, I'm, I'm about to tell you, a big but. Okay, so even though I blame the United States for invading Iraq, and I blame George W. Bush for doing what he called for a hot second, a crusade, and avenging for his daddy's uh, leaving and so on. Who knows why he did it, depending on who you ask. But even though I blame the United States for invading Iraq, which led to a million, up to a million excess deaths, in the ensuing occupation. I also can blame Saddam Hussein for ousting inspectors and not doing more to prevent, by, by complying with, doing more than he had to uh, in order to prevent uh, the, any pretext for the United States to invade. Yes, I can blame a government, not the people. I don't blame the people. They're complete victims, but their leaders should have done more to prove yes yeah, so i can blame both their leaders to some extent as well as the united states i can chew gum and walk at the same time do you understand well, the difference there i guess even if you wanted to draw that comparison right like as if anyone during the iraq war would be like hmm, well from an anti-imperialist perspective maybe if saddam hussein hadn't xyz you know even if you wanted to go down that road the critical difference would be that saddam hussein was a mass murdering tyrant who killed hundreds of thousands of his own people where Zelensky was a middlingly popular democratic leader um, who never did anything to invite the antagonism or invasion. Sure. I mean, I agree. And thanks for not making comparisons to Hitler for everybody. Yes, not everyone is Hitler. Not everyone is Saddam Hussein. But the operating principle here, the operative principle is you can blame the, the government of the victim country with, but without blaming the population, right? I make a distinction between Ukrainians and Ukraine. Do you? When you say that Ukraine wants to do something, you really have this vision that like the majority should coerce the minority to do whatever, it's, right? It, that, is, that is how democracies work. If a lot of people want the government to do something and they vote for candidates that will do that thing, then that's the direction it goes, yeah. We haven't really decided on a better system than that for organizing groups of people. Yes, there are way better systems than that. Of course, that's what leads for, to wait, the wars, for, right? Wait, for, for, for def so defending yourself against an invasion, how, what, what, if 5% of the population just wants to run, no, th then everyone surrenders? What, what, what? No, here's been your entire argument this whole time, right? It's like, ha, Russia invaded, I win. And it's like, okay, wait, wait, okay, wait, wait like, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. mm, gonna get mean if you do that again. No, okay. that's not been my argument. There are two things Ukraine can do. It can fight back or surrender. I gave you a reason why I prefer them fighting back. The people of I Ukraine overwhelmingly Ukraine. prefer fighting back. Uh, the fact that At you keep reducing point. my argument to, haha, Russia did it first, is like, this would be like arguing with a Holocaust denier. And they were like, hmm, well, actually, I think the Jews were the ones who were at fault. And then I'm like, okay, but R the Germany did the Holocaust. And you're like, let's do that one. Let's not try Germany did. What's with one. this blame game? Germany did the Holocaust. What are you, a child? Everything happens because of things that happened Great. in the past. Great question. Okay. Can we, can we take that example? Because I think it's very illustrative. Okay. Everyone jumps to the Hitler thing, but I think that's actually very good to analyze. I don't obviously blame the Jews for being massacred in the Holocaust. I'm a Jew myself. And that wouldn't affect if I wasn't. But here's my point. Do you know what led to the rise of the Nazis? What led to the rise of the Nazis was sanctions from France. The Versailles Treaty made it so that Germany paid reparations after World War I and kept doing it until the Deutsche Mark was so worthless that they were burning these things. And by the way, there was also a worldwide depression. So when the Anschluss happened, and if all Hitler ever did was just annex... Uh, Austria, and that was it. No genocides, no violence. Leaders that. that annex neighboring territories based on shared ethnic identity tend to be the ones that also do genocides. There's a concurring but hold on tendency one there. Hold on one moment. What led to the rise of far right, racially crazy ideology Nazis, okay, 
National Socialist Party was the fact that there was a terrible economic situation that was engineered by France and Britain told France, stop, knock it off, it's done already. But so people supported these authoritarian dictators, just like they do in North Korea and other places, because uh, the sanctions then, radicalized bunch, the population. Curious so, yes, how a bunch blame. of other... Let me just uh, one thing. How a bunch this of other is the nations... important takeaway. Wait. Can I just say the takeaway? Can I just say, just 10 seconds. What you're doing I right blame. now is literally anti-Semitism. I hope you realize that. Like, this is the Nazi conspiracy. When you say may, may engineered say... by the French, engineered by which groups in the French government? No, that's what they say. It is not anti-Semitic because I'm not blaming Jews for anything. You... The Jews were victims in all this, but the, the countries that caused the people of Germany, and by the way, they didn't elect the Nazis. There was a... Uh, there was a, a, a civil infighting between communists and Nazis, and Nazis just having to take over the whole government with the false well, flag Reichstag fire. Hindenburg the, point being, them. the point being that if France had just knocked it off and normalized relations with Germany, they would never have elected probably Nazis, and Jews, six million Jews would not have been killed in what was essentially a genocide. Okay, so let's say it's 1942 and you're you're delivering the speech to a group of like allied um, political figures, all right? So what's your suggestion then? Do we like not invade Germany because France was bad with the repayment process? No, see, this is your, this is just the answer, thing, right? Just my answer, here's my answer. This time around, Maybe that's what we'll have to do. But we're not going to learn the lesson next time because next time we're going to create the bad situation and then say, well, look, there's an invasion. I guess we got to now have millions of people die. Look, to me, that the problem starts before the invasion. Why don't we look at patterns like intelligent people and try to prevent invasions from should happening have, in the first place? Should we have preemptively nuked Russia? What's your suggestion? Are you literally like I'm, I've been telling you what my suggestion well, is? Russia, it's Russia has been Russia has been initi No, no, no. So diplomacy is like the retard answer here, right? Everyone says like, no, oh, I well, can get into wait, wait, wait. No. Oh, I would have prevented this conflict with diplomacy, right. right? Like Ukraine has just been sitting on their ass this entire time. They've spent the past eight years sitting Ukraine there. Ukraine is not the one that's supposed to do Ukraine it. It's the United States and NATO countries. Has, Ukraine has been sitting there fearing an invasion from Russia this entire time. If Russia needs to talk it out with NATO countries to not invade Ukraine, then they're the ones at fault. You realize that, right? No, what you should realize is that all the countries that meddles in, meddle in Ukraine and lead to an escalation of violence from what was a small, essentially, skirmish. But there, you, haven't, now, you haven't provided evidence of any meddling, and you haven't provided evidence that anyone else made anything You haven't given any me worse. a chance to. Sure, I can provide a lot of evidence. Russia meddled too. I'm not saying, look, if I was to blame Russia the most, the thing I would blame them for the most out of all of the stuff which they've done was just egregious in Bucha, uh, war crimes, uh, you know, not sitting down with Zelensky and, and not having another Normandy format. I can blame them. And I do. Th this is what you're conflating, by the way. It's not like I'm saying Russia's right. I am saying we live in the real world. Well, I don't the think United you're States. saying anything. Well, why did you have me on the show then if you're not letting me say anything? Because there's What's value the in showing that people who have your positions don't have anything to say. You're just not letting me speak. I'm you've spoken, I assure you, for longer than I have. Listen, there's you th there's there's you keep alluding to this like diplomatic option that isn't there. Russia did this. They chose Mint. to do this. Sometimes Agreement. no, Russia didn't follow it. Russia has to follow it for it to happen. Like they okay. have to pull people out of the area. You. So, so that's it. Mints, like, like you, like the simplicity of this statement. It belies like how little you've thought about this. Minks means nothing because a ceasefire can't work if one party won't abide by it. So there was no point. Russia can't be negotiated. Why did it with. not abide by it? What? You're like a guy who describes one side of a fight. Like your camera sh shows just one side of the fight. Well, oh, look, Russia did punching. invade. Why is he punching? Why? So. Russia invaded Ukraine in 2014 by supplying separatists and providing troops and military equipment there. Why? That, because they didn't like that their puppet fled. No. Yes. Okay, that's the only reason, right? Yes, because okay. Putin wanted control of Ukraine and didn't want them to go to the West. So mm -hmm. uh, he tried the first method, which is to have a political puppet take control of the government and slowly wean away their, uh, their uh, democracy, which is what Putin was doing at that time in Russia successfully mind you 
Um, and when that failed, because Ukraine uh, held protests, Yanukovych fled, uh, the next option was, okay, well then we'll literally like just kill them. We'll bully them out. We'll starve the country. And that's exactly what they did in the Donbass when, what, region. You're, you're conflating all these years. They starved the country in 2014? Yeah. Ukraine did not have a lot of money and basically no military force at the time. So forcing them to commit troops to defend against a bunch of separatists in the East actually did do a lot to fuck their economy. You can see that. Exactly. If you look By the way, if I was to blame Russia, I'm saying out of all the fucked up things that Russia has done, the worst thing it did was to, it was to arm separatists. Like I, I've been saying, the United States does this with many old Noriega and in Syria, and Russia did it. It's fucked up. Yes, they, they've armed separatists. They've, uh, has if they didn't anything. do this, right. But what I'm saying, and what I've come on, on the show to say, is as a libertarian, I'm saying, that's fucked up what these countries are doing, undermining and, and, and um, arming separatists. I agree with you. But what I'm saying is, if separatists like Catalonia, or indeed Hong Kong, okay, that happen to now join China because an empire just kicked around like a football, British Empire says, here you go, China. If the entire Hong Kong comes out and says, we don't want to have China install our governors, we want democracy. So I think the UN, and I think this is what our conversation should be about, should have frameworks to respect the will of the people on the ground instead of the territorial integrity of large Wait, countries. What, what, are you, what are you suggesting right now? What, so what should have been done? With Hong Kong, the agreement was one country, two systems. Then China broke that agreement, uh, started disappearing their uh, leaders and protesters, and then the Hong Kong protesters lost. What, what, what's, what's the solution here? In both cases, the solution, you have the larger so, so government acting in bad faith. You got to understand, you're talking to a guy who builds decentralized systems and is an entrepreneur. So I think in terms your of own creating mind, your system. thought process, is that the decentralized system to which you refer? What, what we're talking you just, about? Do you want to argue or you, I'm trying to introduce new ideas here. You no, asked me a question. The, the idea is here, the solution, di right? diplomacy isn't a new idea. We invented it a million Forget years ago. It's not novel. It, it's not. I'm not talking in sound bites. I can go into detail and substance if you let me. Would but, you just let me talk for a 30 second stretch of time at a time? Go ahead, say whatever you want to say, but leave me 30 seconds to respond. I've given you 30 second blocks getting cut off. every time we've talked. Look, at the end of the day, if a larger, more powerful country doesn't want to engage in good faith, they won't. Power and military might are at the end of the day what dictates the limits of what countries feel they can do. Russia has been bullying Ukraine around for a long time, and now finally, in an effort to commit to that policy, they failed. Ukraine ended up having more teeth than they expected. China basically ended I agree the it had Kong more protest. teeth than it expected. Okay, so may I respond also for 30 seconds like this? Yes, sure. Okay, so I, you asked me what the solution is. The solution in, in a nutshell is to have more frameworks. Like for example, if a country launches a nuke, there should be a framework for de-escalating that and say, oh, okay, well, here's what we do to make sure that we don't destroy the world. There is no framework right now. What I'm saying is there should be frameworks for when, when, when people want self-determination and they have a referendum, that referendum should be overseen by the OSCE or whoever, and then that referendum, there should be a process for these countries to all sign yet another treaty, like the Geneva Convention. What if to they say, just don't well, abide by it? Okay, great question. I can answer it, but I just feel like you're going to cut me off in five seconds. I'm sorry. Um, the the countries abide by things which have been written down and agreed upon multilaterally okay in the un so the un has many of these agreements as a paris climate accords it tried to do but the united states wouldn't wouldn't join that or whatever it had uh, what i'm trying to say is the geneva conventions is a great example there were multiple ones where war became better meaning better in the sense that civilians weren't killed wantonly that they used to there's a now a concept called war crimes where there wasn't before so the un has the ability to solve a lot of these things if the countries are getting together the problem is the un is made up of representatives of drumroll countries but Geneva and countries all of them have one thing in time. common they don't want separatists to carve off little pieces of them so they all agree to not let the separatists have a voice and okay. that's why what a libertarian is not happy with that what system. if countries just don't listen war crimes happen all the time russia's committed them in this country's never name me a country that listened to its separatists and peacefully let we're them not, go there are no separatists here ukraine is a separate country and we're not talking i don't i'm not saying that they should the listen Donda i want separatist. ukraine to fight what okay so there have been referenda no no no, no. All your suggestion regions. is diplomacy what happens if russia just doesn't abide by the diplomatic agreements okay first of all um 
Let's talk about whether it's willing to abide by the diplomatic no, no, no. agreements. What because... happens if they don't want to? Because they're already they do ignoring want to. a ton of them. So no, Elon, even the Elon Musk suggestion, the Elon Musk suggestion was let the people on the ground vote. Let them all come back. No, 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 no. And let's abide Wait, by no, whatever no, they stop, want. Stop, 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 stop with yeah. propaganda. Okay. It's not a propaganda. Stop. It's what Elon Russia, Musk literally tweeted. Russia faced international sanctions after the annexation of Crimea. What Correct. changed? Is that what not changed? an international framework? No, it's the, a the war the U, UN condemnations followed by where's the framework. It's literally it's the law for thee, not for me. When has the United what? States ever faced sanctions for okay? Wait, much wait hold more on. Wait, violent actions. So wait, hold on. So you gave the Geneva Convention uh, as an example of a mm -hmm. framework that has worked. So what Correct. happens when a country breaks the Geneva Convention? Well, at least the law is on the books. And what happens is that it's documented. War crimes are investigated. In The Hague, people are uh, prosecuted, sometimes executed. But more importantly, there is a framework to refer to. So the International Criminal Court is another example. The United States simply threatens the International Court whenever but it inv the UN even and tries the to investigate war crimes in the United States. The UN what I'm saying is there has to be something that we all respect. There already is. Right? The, everyone but Russia. The UN and the ICC have already condemned Russia for their behavior. Basically, every international organization... The UN has just condemned the United States right now about Cuba We're not in November. Wait, wait, shh. We're it not doesn't talking. matter. These countries don't wait, care about wait, this condemnation. We're, we're not talking. So any organization that condemns Russia must then never condemn America? Isn't condemning America evidence of it being you're impartial? You're strawmanning everything I'm saying. No, I'm no, saying... no. You're just not saying anything. Your example right there was just, mm -hmm. hey, the organization is impartial and will condemn America. Therefore, they won't listen to it. So if they condemn America, they won't listen to it. But if they don't condemn America, they also won't listen to it. Correct. No, okay, I'm so, so you're, so, you, no, right? no, no. You're, so you're, you're saying like, nothing. So there's nothing. You're not saying anything. No, you're, I'm not saying nothing. Words. I'm saying there's the ideal solution, which is we keep making frameworks, you know, like in software. No, no, you no. You keep improving you, the law. You are you absolutely. You keep improving edge cases you are and, and bad things a, happening. A so, you wait, 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 wait. Bug, no, right? no, you hold on. You are absolutely yeah. a software guy because you're saying nothing. Like this, we have to use like AI algorithm trends so to determine the will. Yes, I'm condescending. I don't know yeah. if this like kind of talk is better left to software development, but in geopolitics, this, well, what if we simply developed an international, fr no, not that one, no, not that one, no, okay, well, Russia broke the last 17 ones and got condemned 85 times for the, for the no, whole Crimea situation, not that, one. not that one, not that one, not that one, like, <laughs> like, this doesn't mean anything. You've got this, this is the, the other thing, it's another topic, but focusing exclusively on how Russia is the bad actor and never well, any other country. We are what talking to... about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So yeah, I am talking about Russia. That is true. Yeah. But that's all you ever talk about. Have you talked about Yemen? Have you talked about yes. a, lar a larger humanitarian crisis yes. that's happening in Russia? Well, I mostly talk about America because I'm an American. I don't know what relevance mm -hmm. this is. You came on to talk about the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I did, and that's why I'm trying to stick to that topic. But you asked me, what is the solution? So there's More the framework. ideal solution and there's a solution in today's world, right? So the ideal solution is you actually, uh, these countries have to come together and start to talk about the rights of the child. For example, another one would be if you're born in a country, you should get birthright citizenship. That would solve the Palestinian this have, the refugee okay, crisis. Okay, then why don't you call Putin and get him to agree to that? Why don't I call Putin? Yeah. Do, do you see how your solutions are? Oh, was that unrealistic? Like, visible. Yeah, I'm going to call Putin. What's his number? Fine. Give me his number you're right now. Let's get him on the, on the podcast. Like, what do you want me to say? I mean, you're, you're like, we need to get all countries together and get them to agree to things. Oh, oh, look, thank you for solving the problem. We've been struggling with that one for a while. Thank God. Somebody finally came oh, up yeah, with the idea of the international obvious. Neither you nor I, with your audience, have any power to solve these geopolitical problems. Okay, so yeah, I agree. No, hey, actually Greg, we do. We can donate yeah. money to Ukraine so they can afford more Ahimars. We? You mean our government? No, you can if you want. How am I going to donate a nuclear bomb or you know one of these you things? You donate money, Look, and they use nukes. that money to buy weapons. Why would I buy weapons so they could kill Ukrainians? Yeah, every to, bomb no, wait, that no, gets to kill, wait, no, 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 to kill Ukrainian soil. It kills Ukrainians. Every single weapon. That's what I'm talking about. That same misguided morality killed a million Afghans. Do you care? Does anyone? Does Brzezinski you, care? Ukraine Do you wanting to defend itself against invaders is the oh, same yeah. as Afghanistan being attacked by a Soviet Union? What? 
I'm saying to you that Afghanistan was in the exact same situation, the exact same morality was pushed and said, we are going to help Afghanistan as long as it takes, and then Afghanistan is going to drive the Soviets out, and then they're going to uh, glory to Afghanistan. The so thing is, a the million Afghans people died. Fault for defending themselves from the Soviet invasion. This is the how you cast a million people dying. No, they weren't defending themselves against the Soviet invasion. Just like they weren't defending themselves against U.S. invasion since t 2001. There's a complex they set were? of factors. The Afghan resistance forces, though... Sure, the Afghan Arabs and all the people that traveled there were defending themselves against Soviet invasion, sure. And the government Wait, of do Afghanistan you think the did Afghans not welcome the Soviets. to be controlled by the, the largely infidel Russian military occupation? The answer is that in every one of these cases, there is a similar pattern. History repeats itself, or it rhymes. Of big and countries we see invading. Millions of people die. Do you care about this? Yeah, so we shouldn't get Russia to invade countries? No, because Russia is a special case of a general pattern. This happens all the yeah, time. Yeah, they keep fucking killing innocent people. It's crazy. I agree. I know. If only Russia wasn't doing it, I guess everyone would be at peace, right? No. Did I say that? Well, you keep saying Russia when I'm trying yeah, to tell you general Yeah, we are pattern. talking about the Russia-Ukraine war. But we are also saying it's a special case of proxy wars which can be avoided. I'm not saying right? that. I don't think it could have been avoided. I am saying that. Well, yeah, but you haven't I given an example of say, how it could be avoided. Uh, through diplomacy, right, of course. I mean, I can be organized and say three things. One, and we could take any one of these three topics. One, it's a proxy war between NATO and Russia that uses Ukraine as a battlefield. Okay, for influence and territory. A very novel One. position that I haven't heard before. Please continue. Okay. Two. The Ukrainian people want to defend themselves. Now they do. No. You've pushed. Wait, wait. You've are you pushed... saying at the beginning of the Ukrainian war they were like, um, actually, I could give or take being invaded by Dude, Russia. You're like, you're like the people that say that Gaza elected Hamas in 2006. Therefore, they chose to to what what's coming to them. Dude. Yes, I'm most exactly people in like Gaza. That. Let me just finish. Most people in Gaza were two years old in 2006. There are very, a lot of babies there. That's my born. main so, position, that two-year-old Gazans are at fault for Hamas or whatever. That's what I believe. Okay, so how can you... Okay, so you agree with me that saying the country chose something, okay, or, or whatever, is oversimplifying. And saying that most Ukrainians want to fight excluding what led up to it, excluding all the other Ukrainians who don't want to fight, excluding the 11 million families in Russia and Ukraine that have relatives, excluding all stories yeah. of love, Russia and only focusing them. on the stories of hate. And you're saying that's why we should give more weapons to kill more Ukrainians. With, no, right? Russia to Ukrainians to defend themselves against the invasion that is currently happening. Here, I just want to be clear. I want the war to end. I want... How, how, wait, how do you want the war to end? How? Yes. Ideally, ideally, that Putin just wakes up one day and is like, "Oh, I'm not going to be president anymore. This other guy is going to come in. Wouldn't this that other be guy nice. is going to is going to pay reparations, take out all the troops, and Ukraine's just going to live happily ever after. And Putin's just going to be like put in a prison cell. That's okay. So you're saying like the ideal world? Sure. That. Do you have a plan B here, or is that is that pretty much the only plan? You know my plan A. So how do you, so outside of this delusional fantasy, like how do you want the war to end? by diplomacy, by a, at least try to have peace talks. Okay, so diplomacy like what? Give provisions. Okay, first you have to meet with no preconditions. You have to not assassinate the diplomats. Okay, these are like basic things. Third, you have to empower the diplomats to actually negotiate. And fourth, this is the one which is unfortunately not gonna happen, but I would want it to be, televise the negotiations okay but i was no, 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 speaking no, no. to like these the diplomats actual... we don't know what happened in these two hours that they disbanded after two hours they weren't taking it seriously in in march the they actual could have prevented all this the actual provision like what like what because right now russia's like the only thing they want is to hold their existing territory the one that they've already no that's that's where you're wrong As wait a libertarian, i'm sorry wait russia russia live. has agreed to cede territory it's not that Russia... Yes, Russia would agree to cede territory. They the would. Elon How Musk do you know that? Russia. Because they agreed... The, 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 the politicians of Russia tweeted at Elon Musk saying, yeah, we accept that. He said, let the people decide on the ground. What's wrong with this, by the way? Okay, What's wait, wrong that's, with wait that's not the same as them giving it up. 
Um, no, but they said we would abide. We would give it up. We oh, give wait. Up. Russia said they would yep. abide by the provisions of a future By the uh, fantasy decision? scenario of the UN making a, uh, a refer another referendum. Okay, like what happens over. if yeah. uh, Russia just, like, get, does the referendum and then stays in the no, areas not afterwards? Russia. The U no, not Russia. Everyone gets the hell out. Get the civilians who live there Wait, what if Russia just never there. leaves? What's that? What if it's like the Minsk Accords and Russia just never leaves? They're like, oh yeah, we'll we'll do elections here, and okay. then they just never pull out Great. the troops from those areas. Now I think we're actually about to have an agreement here. First, you need to have a goal to aim at, like for example, the grain export deal. Okay, then you get everyone you mediate. You get people to the table, and I've seen Israel and Hamas get together. I've seen the PKK even get together with Erdogan. I think so. What I'm basically saying is, I think I know that. People that have 11 million families there, don't want the war, can get together for what Wait, is normally it's just, it's done just all Putin. the time. It's, it, it's not a democracy. It's just Putin. What if he just lies and keeps troops there? That's another thing I disagree with. It is a democracy. Russia so, is a democracy. Are there elections? Do you, do you believe the results of the Russian elections are reflective of a fair and free democracy? Here's what I'm going to say about that. You need a mechanism, Please, first of all. Well, we okay. need mechanisms. Okay, can I just get an answer yeah. on... Um, I, I don't have enough expertise What to happens know... if Russia just lies? What if they just... Um... I don't have enough expertise to know how trustworthy the Russian elections are. I'm sure they're uh, more trustworthy than other countries say. They're less trustworthy than Russia's politicians say. Somewhere in between is the answer. But it is a democracy to some extent. Well, uh, Assad a has elections. North Korea has elections. There's... Look, is uh, is MBS in, in Saudi Arabia? Is he an unelected dictator? Yes or no? In is Saudi or, in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I... Why don't you use the same language with our allies that you do with? Wait, do you allies? wait? Do you think I don't think Saudi Arabia is a dictatorship? I'm asking you. Yeah. I don't know. I don't watch your show that much. Why no. would you ask me that? Like, it's an, oh, yes, it's a monarchy. They're one of the most evil countries on Earth. Okay. Well, some monarchies are okay. Like Morocco, the king doesn't kill anybody. Or no, I don't, not, I don't yeah. like monarchies. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell, by, that's a separate discussion, by the way. I could go into that. Um, look, you have a democracy where one party reneges on the previous agreements. Like, for example... Clinton made an agreement with Kim Jong-il of North Korea not to get a nuke. There was an agreement made, just lower the sanctions. Then Bush comes in, and the Republicans totally nix the agreed framework, okay? Say, oh, we don't want that. North Korea gets a nuke. Now with Iran, same thing. Tom Cotton and the Republicans openly say, don't trust Obama's deal. We're going to rip it up as soon as we can. So a democracy is great internally. I love living in the United States. I love this freedom of speech we could have. But externally... You can't trust what one party. I mean, Jackson. So what a happens? Bunch of, the Trail if of Tears. I mean, Russia yeah, just ahead. doesn't abide by the agreement, and they just don't pull their troops out. What? Th that's that happens all the time. Yes, you, I I agree. So what happens agreement. if it happens again? Okay, what happens when a nuclear power does not completely? Can you uh, just abide? answer the question? What, yes. So you're saying like this happens all the time. I know. That's why I'm asking you what happens if that happens. Like I'm not what describing an is, unlikely scenario here. What happens is you work it out with them. You listen to why are they not? Why are they doing it? You address in publicly. You have public televised discussions. With, was not North Korea able doors. to do this with the U.S. the Bush administration? Say that again. Was the uh, was North Korea able to do this with the Bush, Bush administration? What about Iran Probably. with uh, Trump's government after we reneged on the uh, nuclear deal? I'm saying both parties need to have a televised Zoom call and explain why they are not abiding by the agreement. They would say, you are do not doing this. Well, you're not doing this. All right, let's both do that thing. Okay. That's how it can happen. So what if right? that what if that happens and then Russia just keeps not pulling troops out of the area? How about we try to make a framework that at least they will break, but at least like the, they the would have already deal. broken the framework by not following the accords. So you're of the saying agreement. so like Erdogan would say, why even make the grain deal? Russia's just not. What happens if Russia just, uh, you know, what happens if Ukraine uh, has a drone that blows up somewhere? In no, Crimea? just what this isn't. What man, this isn't oh, difficult. What happens if the peace treaty that we mm -hmm. try to sign between Ukraine and Russia 
Russia doesn't follow the accords on. They keep their troops in the area. You still, you still make as much effort at putting as much, spelling out what happens if you don't you have a contract and someone breaks the contract. Well, it's better than not having one and having total okay, misunderstanding. Okay, so what do you do after that? First of all, it might never even get to that because people, what you do after that is you listen to the other parties. Oh, you guys have a red line about Ukraine and Georgia. Oh, you don't want us to station uh, nuclear sharing with them, nuclear weapons. Okay, we're going to put that in the agreement like we didn't do with Gorbachev. We're going to do now. We're going to say the nuclear weapons stay here. Okay, They'll never so what cross happens, over here. for example, if Russia backs out of that or doesn't follow their side of things? That's like saying, what happens if Russia launches a nuke at the United States? Well, I can what actually happens? answer that question, though. So it's not like that because you can't answer the question. Okay, that I'm what, what happens if Russia? No, 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 no. Uh, I'll get yeah, to it. But you need to yeah. answer my question, which is, okay. what do you do if Russia says mm -hmm. they will have a ceasefire with Ukraine and peace predicated on an election held in areas currently occupied by Russia? And then Russia mm -hmm. refuses to pull troops out of those areas, essentially meaning that the resulting vote would be null because it would be done under military occupation. I'll try to, okay, so I'll try to, and good faith. So try what to you would you. do, what would you I'm do if they question. just didn't follow that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to answer your question in as good faith as I can. Okay. So your thinking is usually black and white. So you're saying like, here's zero, here's one. And what happens if it's one? And what I'm trying to say is before that ever happens, Let's say that both sides signal their willingness and openness to this Elon Musk deal, let's say. Then they get people, negotiators, with an open televised thing, and they flesh out the details of that deal. So everyone knows what everyone's obligations yes, are. Yes, and then they don't follow it. Yes, and then, and then, see, this is where, in your mind, Rush is ruled by one guy who's Superman, and he's able to just do whatever he wants. But that's not how it works. The Russian public supports this war, and that's really bad. Just like the Iraq war which was supported by the American public who reelected Bush after they knew all the atrocities. So what I'm saying is, yes, you need to get the publics to support it. Okay, what happens if the Russian government, which controls the Russian military, which is the occupying force here, does not remove their troops? So, They're going so, get, to so wait, skip all of the remaining mm -hmm. frame. We should framework. We should diplomacy. Okay, wait, wait, stop. Wait, 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 wait. Let's just make sure we're on the same step. Okay, we're skipping no. past all of the frameworks and all of the will do diplomacies. Russia is just not following this side of the agreement. But do you do you understand that those months of building that up and publicly committing to this thing or that thing, just like the grain deal, publicly commits Russia's leaders in front of their own public to certain actions. You do understand that, right? That's, well, you know, that's super crazy. If only Putin had the power to do things like manipulate the public opinion with the complete control over state media he has. And it might, you know. Sure. And George W. Bush completely manipulated Why do you it, keep right? talking about America? This is because about- patterns, No, stop, because no, 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 stop, 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 stop. You know what my answer is? What happens if the Bush administration lies about the Iraq war? You know what my answer is to that? I don't have I didn't one. Say that. No, no, no. I know. I didn't I didn't say you said that. Here's my okay. answer to the question you can't answer. What happens if Trump backs out of the um of the Iran nuclear accords like he did? You know what happens? Okay. Iran is fucked. They can't do anything. No, no stop, no. stop. No, no, no. I'm giving you, I'm teaching you. We're learning today. Okay. What happens I'm to learning. North Korea? Right. What happens? Master. What happens with North? What happens with North Korea after we back out of an agreement with them? They're fucked because we're the big boys. What happens if Russia fucks over Ukraine? Guess what? This time the little guy doesn't have to get fucked over. Ukraine is strong enough to defend itself. That's why this matters. Most of the time, the bigger bully country, there's nothing you can do about them. We're fucking America. We do bad shit all the time and nobody can tear into us. But in this one instance, the underdog has the ability to prevail. And I think it is disgusting that somebody who calls themselves a libertarian, which is defined by being anti-authority, and a socialist, which is defined by uh, international solidarity, I'm a left would reject- I didn't say I'm a socialist. You did. Yeah. Would reject- I said left libertarian. Yeah. Would reject a rare opportunity for the little guy to win here. That's what can happen. We have a chance this time. Yeah, but okay, I got you. And I, by the way, I love where you're coming from with your passion and I get it. This is where you're coming from. You're saying, look, 
China, Russia, United States, we're all bastards. And yes, we bombed Laos more than any country in history. And yes, we invaded Iraq, and yes, Libya, and all this stuff. But in this one instance with Ukraine, we have a chance to show all imperialists in the world, no wait, only Russia, to show that in this one chance they're going to win. And then we're going to go right back to invading Haiti and Mexico. You know, I would, sh I would prefer one good thing happening to zero good things happening, yes. And it's not our fault that Russia was stupid enough to commit to this invasion. But yes, I agree they're in a quagmire, and they were stupid, and they were malicious, and they trained terrorists. And we do that too. And I agree with all that. The difference between you and me is I want to solve the... You know, when, when bad shit happens, this is what's called science, technology. We figure shit out. We put in new things, technology, laws. We fix that shit. There was a time when women Don't didn't have as many rights as they have. A good way right? of deterring future imperialism might be a very public example of an imperialist country failing and crippling themselves after attempting to annex a neighboring. You know what's country? an even better way though? Wait, is it is the other way? Wait, can we do both? What if we did both? Whatever Let's your way both. is and my way. Let's totally do both agree. of them. Let's do both. Okay. Let's do both. Okay. Well, when are we gonna do the second thing then? The, the frameworks. Well, whenever we're able to. Oh, we're right now, do right no, now, we're, we're, I'm sorry we can't instantly do your made-up fantasy version no, 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 of the good thing, but we can do my thing right now. This is where you We can do my thing. We can do it. Ukraine is winning. We can do yeah, my but, thing. Uh, first of all, I don't agree it's winning. I, I know you Russia don't. Because yeah. you exclusively if, if, consume if thought, Russian if propaganda I, if, sources. I, if I thought that they were winning at this point, I would say, look, you've already lost 100,000 people on both sides. Just fucking drive the Russians out. Yeah, sure. They're winning. Uh, at, this, at this particular moment in time. territory. They reclaimed a huge swath of territory just a couple days ago. Yeah, do you know how a stock, you're like a stock, uh, you know, oh, look, the bears won, and then the, bull, uh, the bulls won, and then the bears come in. Look. Uh, what? They've been uh, doing nothing but losing this entire time. Russia's been losing territory nonstop for months. It's been okay, military so never defeat after military because defeat. it's been losing uh, value since uh, last year. Never yes, actually. In... Also, don't invest in crypto because it okay. is a pump and dump scheme that and was designed by billionaires to fizz up, money out never, of stupid poor people. Never short crypto because it's always going up. I mean, that's a silly argument, isn't it? Yeah, that would have been a silly now, argument if it was one that I made. Just because something is happening when you look at the graph for the last day doesn't mean that it's never going to reverse. Please, what are you talking well, about? I can't talk with you about crypto too. We can't do we can't do everything. Forget crypto. I'm trying to tell you a, a basic thing. Just because an army is winning at some point, in the in the Civil War, Cons uh, for the, the Confederacy entire past was winning year. at some point. The Confederacy was winning. That doesn't mean that. Oh, that's it. Let's just let's just uh, continue the war. Okay. Yes. I'm, gonna... Okay. So, do you have any processes by which you can determine the likely outcome of future events, or is it just like? Pissing in this wind. case, in a, in, a, in a war where you have new technology and drones? No, I don't. Oh, I think okay. Ukraine could actually beat the pants off of Russia because these generals like McGregor and others don't understand that new technology doesn't matter who fires that button on the drone or on, 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 the, uh, on the missiles. They're self-propelling. Who cares if Ukrainians are fighting it or, or you gave them the technology? It's way better than the Russian one. So yeah, if you keep giving them the technology, I think they're going to win. Well, then, so that, this, well, yeah, th there we go. The little, the underdog, the victim of imperialist aggression can win if we just keep giving them large explosives. Yeah, let's keep that's doing it. possible. That's possible. And at this point, I might even agree with you. But what I'm saying is I'd like to have the conversation where you said we should do both, right? We should have the so framework the afterwards. And what I'm saying is you're disingenuous about that because you don't really seem to care about that conversation at all. I want this to stop in the whole world, not just in Ukraine. I want it to stop in Yemen. I want it to stop in Taiwan. I want the frameworks to happen right now to start the countries to start listening to each other. Right? That's okay, what I'm saying. And let's do both. And since right now my thing is happening at the moment, we can do that and we can work on the other thing too. Yemen is happening right now. Can okay, what do you do want to do about, about Yemen that? and what does it have to do with Ukraine? It has to do with the fact that it's part of the same pattern that's been going on that we need to fix. Okay, so maybe we can help fix this pattern by demonstrating Thank you. that countries that are invaded do have the ability to defend themselves against global hegemons. And, and the second thing, put in the frameworks to de-escalate conflicts before they start or even after they start. The frameworks matter more because then they have to explain to their public. It's like George W. Bush says, look, I commit to withdrawing by this date. And then I commit to helping the Iraqis. And then guess what? He doesn't do that. He has to explain to the war hawks in his country 
and to the to the peace doves. Why didn't you do that? You said you committed yourself to this. You didn't do it. But in order to for that to happen, we have to have a framework for them to commit to, okay. like the grain deal. Yeah. Like the Minsk agreement. Which that which Russia didn't follow. Okay, but it was much easier and much better for Ukraine to have gone first and we, withdrawn we can have, their we can have for stuff, example, we can from have the stuff like zone. We can have stuff like on, the Geneva they would have Accords. Had control of their entire border, as in the Minsk deal. We can have stuff saying, like the Geneva Accords, which Russia didn't follow. We can have stuff like the Grain Deal, which Russia didn't. We can do stuff like the Minsk Agreement. Neither which Russia side didn't follow. completely follows things. This is where you're one or we zero. Can, we can just. So it seems like frameworks aren't actually a really good way of moderating the behavior of um, hedge funds. Guess what? The world is messy, but we have laws. You're like the guys that say, "Oh, if we ban guns, then only the criminals will have guns." Well, it's I like am one pro or zero. gun. No, it's good to have the laws on the books, okay? Okay, so what law should we have in the books right now? It's not up to me. It's up to the negotiators to be empowered. What? To e They weren't even empowered. Okay, what about, what about say, UN resolutions on illegal acquisition of territory? You understand Ukraine assassinated one of its own representatives? Oh my god, oh, please! No, stop! I, I don't know if you saw a squirrel. We have to stick to this topic, okay? No, but they assassinated their own representatives to send a message. Okay. That's great. I love That's it when they do that. That's not relevant to you. I love the it when SBU. they do that, okay? So, yeah. we, so we already have UN Which Accords is, on the illegal acquisition of territory. That's already a framework. It's That's like the if the CIA assassinated the representatives that were sent by Biden to make peace with Ukraine. Like, the, let's say the Iran okay. deal what was does happening. What does that have to do with she, what I'm saying? Okay, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I'm not, by the way, I don't want to say, it, it sounds like I'm blaming Ukrainians. I'm not. I am for Ukrainian civilians to be, to, to go back to their kids and, and like start living lives, right? Oh. There's no reason to. Under Russian to rule? Keep killing another 100,000 people for no fucking reason. Under Russian rule? No, not on, Russia's goal was not to take over Ukraine with 100,000 troops or 150,000 troops. It was laugh, like, okay. Let's talk about that because I think your premise is that Russia is trying to genocide all Ukraine or no, maybe do no, we don't have to get into that. Them invading is enough. I don't think they should be able to invade. I think it's good when invading countries get beaten back. Um, I agree with you. I agree it's good when invading countries get beaten back, but not at the expense of millions of people's lives. Okay, so then you aren't okay with them being beaten back. It's a matter of degree. How many Ukrainians have to die before you would change your mind? What? No, they, it's like them. I don't. I don't decide for them when they surrender. Zelensky has the ability to surrender. You can check Zelensky's approval rating. Currently, with the I, fighting they're doing, I don't despite, care about... despite all the dead Ukrainians, it seems like more than ninety percent of Ukrainians support Zelensky and therefore support Zelensky's current attitude towards the conflict. Okay, so then take the polls in Russia and say that many support Russia's invasion well, of Ukraine. Well, that would be, yeah, so the critical difference there is that Russia is the one invading Ukraine. So this yeah, is like the difference. Is, so, well, the Jews don't want That's to be holocausted, but the Germans about. want to holocaust the Jews. So really, who can really say what the democratic... Uh... The support of the Germans for the Nazi regime was monstrous, and the support of the Russians for their invasion is monstrous, and okay. our support so for the, the Iraq Ukrainian invasion is monstrous. Yes, should be the ones these to things decide. can all be true at the same the, time. The Ukrainian people should be the ones to decide the extent to which they want to defend their territory. And they can do so through their support of Zelensky. The Ukrainian people and the Russian people do not want to kill each other. Then why are they enlisting to fight Russians? They're because the politicians are conscripting oh, them. Oh, I see. So there's no. So all of the uh, all On the Ukrainian sides. soldiers are just like unwilling recruits. Hello, do you know there's a law since the February twenty second that men cannot leave the country? I'm fully They're aware. I talked about it. Okay, so both sides are forcing so people to fight. why do so many Ukrainians support Zelensky then? Because he's their president. And th so they didn't support Yanukovych. Yanukovych was the president. Actually, many did. You just discount the entire Eastern no. Ukraine. No. They were disenfranchised. They okay. Oh my God. That. Wait, I, I, we can we can keep running around this for sure, but you're literally like empty. You, okay? you don't actually believe Ukraine anything. You a democracy by disenfranchising no, you don't, millions you don't of believe people anything. Okay, listen. How long should a country fight to defend itself? Well, that should probably, so if the country's in the right to defend itself, that is to say, it defending itself, it's not like Germany defending itself in like 1944 or whatever, it's defending itself like legitimately against an unjust invader, then the people should decide the extent to which they want to do that. And one of the ways that they can do that is by supporting their head of state, who is currently dictating the war process. 
So by That's supporting the same Zelensky, framework that you've always used, and it will always lead to the same results. Millions of people suffering. Sure. Except yeah. the country that's invading is the anti-democratic autocracy. So if anything, my system is the one that's the victim of your okay, so, system. Okay, so let me, let me just ask you, in your system, right? When there was the British Raj, okay, yes, they had a king, but they had a parliamentary democracy, not whatever. But they had the British East India country, which turned into the British Raj, millions dead, the Bengal famine, which happened after the Holodomor, terrible things, including in their own backyard with the Irish also, the Irish potato famine, whatever. It's terrible stuff. So they, they, they come to India, and what got them out was Gandhi's peaceful, non-violent resistance. India's free now of the British. Wait, do you, wait you, do you seriously yeah. think that, when you realize that Gandhi worked alongside the violent revolutionaries and even admitted that yeah. he would not have been able to oust Britain if it weren't for their help, right? But also, we didn't supply but weapons. Also, for, no, yes, also, We shouldn't yes. have, so, wait, you, you wouldn't have supported supplying weapons to no. the, the Indian resistance who were victims of millions dead from um, British occupation, you would have just been like, ah, oh, you know, let them let him decide between the two groups, you know? Oh, you on one side, this. you have the imperialist genocidal uh, No, 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 I want to be super clear. I want to be super clear. If there is a way to avoid anyone being killed to any great extent, and it would lead to, say, five years of domination by this country, but then the government changes and they renegotiate, versus... Let's say a country comes in and starts killing people and you imminently need to stop a genocide, then yes, I would support going in there and stopping an imminent genocide. But if there's a way to not even have a genocide and the worst thing that will happen and is this could have happened with Ukraine surrendering will be slightly changed somewhere. Yes, I would totally not give weapons to change that. So yeah. should Ukraine have just surrendered to Russia from the get go because it would have been morally wrong for them to defend themselves? Ukraine should have probably, and I'm saying this as someone who doesn't know all the details, but mm -hmm. most likely gone first in withdrawing to the demilitarized zone in the Minsk agreements, going first. There is no demilitarized. Yes, risking, wait, 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 wait. You wait, wait, wait. First of all, when the Minsk Accords yeah. were still in effect, or at least attempted to be in effect, they already were in the right place. The Russians were the ones in the Donbass region. That's one. And for two, uh, Russia opened this war with an attack on Kiev. This wasn't just about the Donbass. You keep conflating. When you said the last part, this war, you meant 2022, right? Yes. Attack on Kiev. Okay. Which one do I aim at first? Let's take the attack on Kiev. No, okay. so we can't. We can't. We can't do this forever. You just say things and don't let me respond. I do. I okay. love saying cool. things. We can't do this forever. You say two things. I don't know which one to start with. What, what do you want me to start with? Both. No, you said, no, 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 no. This is the problem. You said two things. You talked about the Minx agreements and you talked about um, retreating past the territorial line. I'm indicating that that wasn't relevant in any instance of I'm, this conflict. I am saying, you asked me a question. What should have Ukraine, should Ukraine have surrendered? My point was... At any point prior to 2021, in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Normandy format, Britain and, uh, sorry, France and Germany trying and, and Belarus trying to get them together. If Ukraine unilaterally withdrew and said, we're not going to fire a single bullet, we're going to try to get these uh, right wing militias to stop fighting, which, by the way, it was very hard to do because what these guys. What time period was this again? Huh? What what are, are we talking about now or twenty? We're talking about 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Any one of those years. If the Ukraine took the initiative in demilitarizing, so to speak, right? And allowing these regions to have elections and enfranchising them back into Ukraine. Then if Russia didn't do anything and just kept, you know, dominating, it would have to explain to its public why it's a complete asshole. And what I'm trying to tell you is that's the point that I want to get them to, is that there is no defense to their own public of their actions. Currently, there is, clearly, because their public is, you know, is on that side with their media. What I'm trying to say is if Ukraine unilaterally, just, you know, like Gandhi, okay, here you go. Within a month, they would have control of the whole thing. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. I think that's profoundly dumb and naive. I don't know. Why? Because why? that's I want literally to dig into why you think that's profoundly for done, every imaginable reason, that. beginning with the laws of thermodynamics and ending with every book I've ever read. It's this is this is outside of reality. This is fantasy. We're talking we're talking about uh, about the, the the little red riding hood here. No, Russia invaded. This this is never how conflicts play out. Russia okay, I'll invaded. You that it was 
No, it's not. No, it's example. not. It's not. It Russia has played out that way. Invaded. They invaded. It they wanted way. land. They wanted power. That's what countries do when they invade. That is the thing that they like. That's not the only thing they want. Those are You're the main things like they want. Yes. Actors. They, no, You're that is the main thing that they want. If you go back to Rome, okay. let's or to say Crusades, it's the main thing they want. They, they, do you understand that 11 million okay, Russians what if, have families in Ukraine, right? Okay, you understand they, they, were, the... they were fine before 2014 Agreed. when Russia invaded and, and turned the Donbass, which was the area of Ukraine with the most ethnically Russian people, into a fucking war zone. Russia Agreed. doesn't care about Russian ethnic people. That's what I blame them for the most. I said, out of everything, including Bucha, I blame them for arming the separatists and to bringing those guys like Gherkin or whatever, same as we did with Panama and Noriega and, and train them and send yes, them in yes, there. America yes, America That is really malicious, yes. Yes, I agree. Okay. But that doesn't mean there isn't a pathway. Here's my point. There's gotta well, be a pathway God, God willing, way. May, may one day the greatest diplomats of the world be blessed with your knowledge. With, with respect, like, this is, I, look, I don't do this shit, okay? This would be like me coming on here and being like, you know how you could end the war in Ukraine? Really sick military tactics. As somebody who's played a lot of CSGO, okay? I'm gonna show you guys what Ukraine could do to bring this to an end real quick. Like, that's what you're doing, but from the diplomacy perspective. Except everyone, it's not everyone, just me you're, No, it. you're an idea, no, it's it's geniuses like Elon, yes. It's ideas, guys. Can you, can you, people, okay, no, 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 me, no, no. It's people oh, no. who have spent their entire seconds, lives. I'll tell you a list of who's who. It's who's tech guys. It. It's people who have had their whole lives. No, it's their not egos tech guys. inflated. Noam Chomsky is not a tech guy. Noam Chomsky's suggestion was that Ukraine just surrender and let themselves be raped by Russia. At nope. least he's honest nope. enough to I, recognize that's what would happen. I interviewed him myself, unlike you. That's I've asked what. Him directly that is what would happen. At least he's honest enough to admit it. Like at least Noam Chomsky was just like. No, he doesn't admit it, and he says. No, he does, and he's correct and said, "Yeah, like yes, they should just surrender." Yeah, go look at my video. Go look at my video where I point blank ask him and he says I don't tell what Ukraine what to do I am telling our country to stop getting in the way of a peace agreement and to just right you know, which is it's a profoundly retarded about, sentiment have a parallel... yes. are you even listening okay whatever well, there's no Go reason ahead. to listen to anything Noam Chomsky says on this subject he's embarrassing and he should probably have stopped talking you're about misunderstanding him okay. no I pro sure. I promise you I understand him far better than How, you. why would I believe your promise when I have Talk to him and ask them this directly. Because, because directly. I'm, asking, I'm asking you to be half as trusting with me as you are with Russians when it comes to diplomacy. That's all I'm asking, okay? I'm not trusting Russians or any imperialist country. Hey, what are we supposed this, to do when I'm Russia doesn't follow them, the provisions of I'm the peace I'm letting agreement? them sign an agreement, a contract that they are then publicly committing themselves to, to their public. Okay, in and what, and what if they just... Oh, dude, again, this is what I mean by, like, overconfident ideas guy who spent their entire lives being told they're special by people above them, okay? Wow, Russia should sign a piece of paper saying they're gonna do a good thing, and that it's way they'll be held to it. Paper, dude, that's how... the United States is more of a democracy than Russia is, and we break agreements what all the time. What was the Iran time. deal? How about, okay, so according the, to you, We just broke it. Iran what deal? happened after we broke the Iran deal? Nothing! Why have a, why have a deal? Why have a deal? That's why a great question. Laws? Why have Murders a deal? Are gonna, look, rapists are going to rape. Why have laws? Why have laws? So, what, But what I'm you asking do? you, what happens yeah. if they don't abide by it? What happens when a rapist doesn't abide by rape laws? You arrest them. And what if you can't? Well, then you keep trying, and if you can't, that's bad. So oh, what you happens... you can't find them. Okay, they're not strong, they're just elusive. Yes, and Go rape ahead. is unfortunately quite So why quite have common. laws? So what, you're, like, your so whole what, logic happen is like, what happens when yeah. Russia doesn't follow the agreement what happens when a rapist can't be can found you just answer i just answered we just did the rapist thing that you want to talk it's, about and okay, i answered so the answer is it's still worth it to have them commit to okay as much as so possible. what happens after that so it was worth it we gave we did the agreement it didn't work out we didn't though how about we try no i'm okay wait hold on wait take, wait can, i'm holding the power button on the back of your head for two seconds so you reset okay just shh, it's okay okay we have followed your example and we have done the paper and we wrote on it and now Russia isn't abiding by that agreement. What do we do now? Then we can go back to doing what we're doing now. War. War. Okay. Well then why the fuck is Russia not willing to meet to discuss diplomacy without any preconditions. Actually, after they took those regions, they're kind of open 
to diplomacy at this point. It's the Ukrainians that say, until Putin is reelected or another guy comes in, we are not talking that that war criminal. And Russia, I can understand Russia them. Russia isn't even talking about ceding the territory. That's the preconditions for meeting is what you said. Now you're Yeah, Russia's goalposts. precondition is that they keep the territory. No, the, there's no preconditions for talking. That is the precondition they have for diplomacy. They are uninterested in ceding the okay. territory. So, so then I blame Russia as well. Is that what you want to hear? Blame? Yeah, well, what I'm when, you, about. when you've decided who's at fault, you can then go on to decide what can be done to address the problem. So yes, assigning is, blame is really important when you want to figure out what to do next. Yes, assigning blame is important, but it sometimes is not the most important thing, and that's what children don't understand, but adults do. Well, I agree. The most important thing is continuing to give Ukraine weapons. Fine. At this point, you may be right, and I hope you're right. I hope that Russia simply gives up, doesn't have those 300,000 people they conscripted, enter a winter war. I hope so. I want the Ukrainian people to oust the Russians. But what's your plan B? You asked me about a plan B on a fantasy scenario. This is a realistic scenario. Russians didn't do all this for nothing. What's your plan B if Russia starts conscripting more people? Oh, just keep keep doing what we're doing, right? Yeah, it's not like it costs us anything. What, a couple billion dollars to give Ukraine the ability to defend itself against our number two geopolitical oh my threat? Goodness. Dude, I'm sorry, but that's so callous. Like, us, it's like when we destroy Libya and we talk about four Americans. Damn, well, that's, that's crazy. Be? Well, you know, Russia could always um, leave and then they wouldn't keep getting blown no, up by it, our no, missiles. It's literally, no, dude, like now I, I get to say this to you, okay? How about you turn off your heat for the whole winter, at least, at the very least, and at the most, why don't you go to a war zone and live how they are supposed... You're volunteering their lives for your geopolitical... No, the you know, Ukrainians thing. are volunteering their lives. They're called volunteers. Not all of them. Not the conscripted men. They're who not have currently to, doing conscription. This is the thing. You got... This is why libertarians have the skepticism, right? You've got this thing where, well, they voted for it. Hamas voted for... Uh, Gaza voted for Hamas. Like, no. The people... It's what much more fuck? nuanced than that. What are you talking that. about? What? Okay, so but your they, they logic, can listen. If listen, not of a nationalist. If Russians don't want to get blown up by our missiles, then they can simply leave Ukraine. It's not I, their I hope home. you don't. I hope you don't get offended by what I'm saying now. And I, I, I understand you're coming from a good place. You want um, territorial integrity of Ukraine to be restored. What I I'm care about the people, will of the Ukrainian people to not be invaded and conquered by a fascist neighbor. Good. But the way you're going about it by is defending yourself in a conventional war. Is exactly war. what extreme you what you're saying. The things you say. Well, it's not us being killed; it's them. And you know, uh, look, the, it, that it's is what, how it and, works. And, yes. And, and when you say that, wait, did you just agree with that? It's not us getting killed; it's them. Yeah, that right? that is true. Yes, it is not me getting killed in the Ukraine-Russia war between Ukraine yeah. and Russia because I'm an American. So, so, so that's a special case of the problem. Because the politicians can always say, it's not me getting killed. No, it's again, the no. That I... The politicians in America aren't prolonging the war. We're just no. giving the Try good guys focus. weapons. Politicians everywhere, including in Ukraine and Ukrainian politicians, like Aristovich, advisor to Zelensky, they have said in 2019, we want to have a big war because then we get into NATO. And yes, millions of people will die. Or not millions, but like, they understand people will die, but not them. Oh, not sorry. Wait, are you quoting them or not? Because the way you just corrected yourself made me think you were making part of that quote up. Okay, go and look up Aristovich no. prediction 2019. I don't care about what some guy said in 2019. All I care is that the people of Ukraine right now want to defend themselves against an invasion from a fascist neighbor, and I okay, want to support I get that. that. I get that, and it's slightly better than saying Gazans elected Hamas. It is. There's the, no relationship the will of the between people these two things. To 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 have Hamas. Look, the will of the people is this thing that people say there's 20% There's, there's literally turnout. no relationship between these things that are being said here. There's none. There's no connection. It's a non sequitur. I think that that is the difference between a statist and a libertarian because the statist has the consent of the governed. Well, we voted for this policy, so therefore we could have 100,000 people die the principled now. libertarian surrenders and allows themselves to be conquered by the fascist country. Yes. So when Duterte kills a bunch of drug dealers and, uh, and innocent what, people... What is this new example? No, it's just an example of your principle, which is if people vote for a guy and he winds up with a policy that kills a lot of people, well, they voted for it, so they must support no. the killing of these people. 
we're talking we're not talking about killing a bunch of people we're talking about That's defending yourselves against an invasion in which case okay. yes i if do they think were it's not, okay i guarantee you that if all they were doing was in defending themselves against an invasion and not simultaneously attacking the donbass cities that they've been doing for years then a lot more people would look at that and be well, like russia was the one who themselves. attacked the donbass when they invaded the donbass that was kind of on them as well so you're like those uh, libertarians in nap which it says i it's defensive use of force i it's always defensive according to the well, i do believe in the, the right to self-defense that is the thing i believe in yeah okay so just like the libertarians believe in defending your property you believe in defending your national territory um, yeah, if people in a nation are being invaded and conquered by fascists, then I am okay with them preserving their national sovereignty by defending themselves. It's ironic because your Very standard ironic. for fascists would mm. include most Ukrainians, apparently. Uh, well, we're talking about the state. See, you tend to conflate people and governments, but I don't. I don't Ukraine, think like you. No, I don't no, think you, Ukrainians you do. That's are, your, are fascists. See, as a libertarian, I recognize that the Russian people are not their government. The Russian government is autocratic. The Ukrainian government is democratic. So, yes. No. No. If it was democratic, they wouldn't have a revolution every couple, every decade. Nothing less democratic than the literal manifested will of the people. We would have to disagree on that. Democracy is a frame. There's a framework for voting. You have to trust the elections. You have to have a good democracy. Libertarian. <laughs> democracy <is. laughs> I was, yeah, uh, um, what is democracy if not voting? What is the decision making? You were collectively? you were lambasting collective decision making earlier. You're so politically incoherent. I said, "What are you talking?" You can, no, I I'm said, "I literally said you can say that Zelensky's support for the war is popular with Ukrainians because he has like 91 percent approval." And That's you were like, fair, "Oh, is that, that how you determine the will of the people?" And now you're unironically like, "Listen, liberal, no, elections are the even only by way." Your own rules. I'm saying it's not the best system, but at least by your own rules, you shouldn't call it a democracy when they have a revolution I'm and okay topple with, their government. What? First of all, it wasn't a revolution. It was a protest that led to a coward fleeing it's objectively not a revolution the government was not effective you literally go on wikipedia it's called the revolution of dignity it is literally a they revolution. they can call it whatever called... they want man it was a protest a revolution um uh, replaces the that's government. how they start they didn't did even the appoint a new leader start with a protest by students it all how did tiananmen square it was squashed they didn't even a appoint, lot of these... they didn't appoint a new leader they didn't attack the existing one. They didn't change the framework of government or demand changed, a new constitution. Arab Spring totally changed, the, like almost every country so that. So if had I an if Spring. I cough on uh, on Biden and he um and he like flees the country in fear, is that like a revolution because he like panicked? Yeah. And if left? if in not if January sixth they ousted Biden, that would have been a revolution. Yeah. Except January sixth was an attack prompted by a political candidate to kill yeah. existing members of the existing um of the um to of the kill, existing government. Really? To kill. He openly called Man, for their deaths. Out of out of curiosity, is there any like retarded positions you don't believe in? Are you an astrology guy? Are you like what what else just, can we just get to through? Just to summarize your no no no. Position? Just uh, let's let's really get Better to the depth of it. What me, things right? do you not? I'm so not you're a crypto guy. It's good for our weapons industry. That's what Trump said. It's uh, it's big right. jobs feel, business to give the feel, Saudis I weapons. I feel I feel like we've pretty much I feel like we've pretty yeah. much exhausted this here, man. We like you're the 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 issue here is that like. You, no matter what happens in the real world, you're going to sit like in your padded cell convincing yourself that if only more frameworks had been built, if only people could respect your genius, like none of this would have happened. No, it's but not nothing I say will change genius. your mind. It's literally so. the other way. Can I just say this one thing? You're the armchair general saying that if we give Ukraine more weapons, they're going to win. And because you believe in that, you're literally saying, well, if another 100,000 people die, it ain't me and my family. I bet you that if it was you and your family and it was your city that's being attacked, you might talk a little differently. Yes, I would. Them. I would love if it was my city being invaded by a fascist government. I would absolutely be on the front line saying we should surrender. We shouldn't fight back. Yeah, that's that's in no, line I with think my what ideology. You do, I mean, I could be wrong. But if a city a thousand miles away from you was being attacked, I bet you wouldn't go there with your family and sit there <laughs> What's, on your bomb. That's just uh, position debunked. I am not currently a, a part of the foreign legionaries. Uh, it is true. I do play video games from my uh, from my studio. Of what what of cool. I'm saying that if Mexico decided to take back Texas or the one third of the United States, which was previously Mexico, but illegally annexed in a war or whatever by the United States. I guess legally, because back then there were no laws, and you seem to say laws are irrelevant. 
and what? UN is irrelevant, then fine. Well, that's Mexican territory. So if Mexico decided to take back Texas, are you saying that you, you think would wait, the territorial integrity so, of the United States wait, you would do you, sacrifice wait, your family do you, for that? Wait, do you I wouldn't. Wait, do you think um Ukraine defending itself against fascist invaders is the same as Mexico. I would say the United States invading re itself against an invasion from Mexico is not warrant me, a libertarian in New York, to go travel to Texas to fight. Do you that. even Absolutely understand not. my? I feel like I feel like I'm arguing with you, and you're like, okay, well, hmm. if your positions are correct, then how is exactly that you can see the moon during the daytime, and then you point up at the sky during the daytime, and you're like, see, it's right up there. How can you possibly make these claims? I have no idea how to debunk what you're saying because I don't even know what we're talking about right now. I have no idea what you think a defeat of my argument. You can see arguments. the moon in the daytime sometimes. What are you even talking I about? That's a good question. I, I, I you know what? I, let's, <laughs> Dude, let's, I we can, let's, we can, let's, I, I let's find an minutes. answer. Because let's find an answer to this question. I, I hope, see, this is, this is an example of why things don't get resolved. If I listened to you for three minutes without interrupting, and then you listened to me and made an effort to try to, in good faith, understand my arguments, guess what? We would come to an agreement, and I believe so would Putin and Biden, Putin and Poroshenko. They don't care, and if they don't only care we because they don't have more, if, only, if only the world leaders and the most powerful governments on earth had considered that talking to their opposition might be good. Sadly, your genius may yet not be recognized in our time. Well, I'm sorry that you had to end it on a snark, but I think we agree on that. No, I think we, both we, we don't, because they've tried. Because Russia is full of bastards. Because they're a fascist government, and they lie, and they cheat, and they steal from their people or from others. And you shouldn't trust any goddamn thing that comes out of the Kremlin. The only real diplomacy you can have with the Russian government as it currently stands is the one that gets splattered across the hillsides of Ukraine after U.S. missiles make contact. And if that's ever going to change, it'll be when Putin's out of office. And I'm not going to sacrifice the entirety of fucking Ukraine to the diplomatic wills of a country that lied 87 times a minute on its way to this invasion. Can you give me like 60 seconds to just say the last thing I want to say? Sure, but it won't be and as cool as the thing I said. I, I think it was cool. The, the socialist revolution, the Internationale, was about workers of the world unite. Okay, nationalists. I'm sorry, but you speak like a nationalist. This nation is bad. It can't be trusted. Those leaders, they can't be trusted, but we could be trusted, or maybe we can't be trusted, but we certainly can't have any deals or any laws or anything. People had no laws. People didn't have the UN, and the United States took Mexico's territory in a war, just like that. And my point is that this happens all over the place. Proxy wars happen all over the place. Having agreements. Having politicians like Bernie Sanders, perhaps, or others willing to go to Russia and actually listen to the other people, even when they were the USSR and have sister cities. These are the kinds of people we need. And we need them in Ukraine. And then the war would have never happened. We need, we need them, them in Russia. We need them in the United States. We need them in Russia. You're carrying water for politicians that don't do their job and don't get killed. In this respect, and don't ride into battle. Ukraine and NATO countries. Everyone else gets killed for them. For their failures for for russia's invasion in this instance and uh, blame. And every country involved about russia did what they were supposed to i want people to not die and for that i would like to have frameworks and contracts drawn up international well, hey, new treaties foreign so, legionnaire are you willing to go over to russia are you willing to go to the kremlin and argue your case i would if you go join the foreign region legion and fight if i go to ukraine and join the foreign legionnaires You'll go to Russia, to the Kremlin, and you'll argue like, hey, what if we tried diplomacy instead of the invasion? Yeah, go ahead. All right, I'll consider it. All right, me too. Right. I love you. <laughs> All right, man, this was cool. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. Have a good night. <sighs> if only we'd establish more frameworks beforehand. Oh, right. Oh, sure. Woo. Okay. I want I want you all to know. Okay, people are like, oh, you know, I could do Vosh's job. Ninety nine percent of the time, you're right. Okay. However, sometimes, sometimes, uh, sometimes this job demands much of me. I want you all to know that. Um, is that guy just a fash? No, I think he's a tech bro. I think that there's a lot of people like this. I don't, I don't think he's malicious. I really don't. Maybe some people disagree. I think for a lot of people, it's like they they see a lot. Mm, a lot of people don't like the idea of recognizing that the world is complicated and also sometimes like sort of dumb and, and, and outside their control. 
And it's like, ah, oh, well, why haven't they tried X or why haven't they tried Y? One of the big things that you can do when growing up, like one of the big like hallmarks of maturity is like looking at something that doesn't quite make sense to you and thinking there's a reason for this. I might not get it and it might not be a great reason, but there are not only are there reasons for this, people have dedicated their lives to those reasons and like died over them, like any minor thing, you know? But some people, I guess that, like, it's, so it's like, some people don't want to buy that. So it's like, oh, yeah, well, actually, you know, if only they were <laughs> diplomatic. Elon Musk does this, right? Like, Elon Musk. Remember? He, uh, there were those, there were those, like, Thai kids ca trapped in a cave, and he wanted to, um, be a hero to save them. So he, like, he was like, what if we do this totally impractical thing that won't work? Um, and then he got rebuked, and some other guy showed him up, and then Elon called that guy a pedophile based on... Um, info from a PI that he hired that got fake info. He hired a guy to defame this hero so that he could, like, steal the spotlight or some insane shit like that. Like, you know, but but that's, like, yeah, it's like, that's, you know. You really need to stop accepting debates like that? Nah, I thought that was fun. You perform well, I think you could have benefited from more frameworks. Yeah, true, true. Is this what a technocrat is? No, a technocrat is a person who believes decisions should be made by experts, like 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 field experts, you know, not a democracy. Um everyone's at least a little bit technocratic, you know. We probably want the CDC being run by like healthcare professionals and not like game show hosts, you know. Um You had WhatsApp pings? That wasn't me, that was him. Um Yeah. I don't want to debate Chomsky. He's too old. It would just make me feel sad. I'm not joking when I say that. That's not that's not that's not me being like lazy or whatever. Like legit. It would just like dampen my spirit significantly for this like hero. It'd be boring because he talks really slow and we could there couldn't be any like blood sports, even though the stuff he says is really dumb. And like if I challenged him on something, he would take eight million years to answer. And I I just I don't want to. I don't want to. It would it would not it would make me very unhappy. It's a clout thing that I could get. I've had the opportunity to do it before. I just don't I, yeah, mm.